Hello, everybody, and welcome to the year, six year celebration of Frontline, Comic Frontline of Comic Book. It's uh, not the six year anniversary of Comic Book Weekly, but it's our six year anniversary as Comic Frontline today. We have a really special show for everybody here. I see JD's already asking what the difference between Batman and a robber is. Um, Batman can go into a store without robbing. Oh, God. Psst. <laughs> Got that one. <laughs> I'm Chris, Dark Avenger C86, as you can see. Next to me, we got Cat Comic Uno. And then next to her, we have Brant from Last Ever Press. What's up, everybody? Underneath me. I don't me, know what that was, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's special for the live. Yeah, it's special for the, for the anniversary, yeah. Under, underneath me is Michael, dude, Rock 18. Hey, guys, dude, Rock 18 here. I just said that. And then diagonal for yeah. Michael is Mike, comic book corner 2.0, Spider Slayer. And that's it. And yeah. you're diagonal for me, Chris. I am. <laughs> we're, we're diagonal from one another. <laughs> and then this if we kick Michael so off the show, you're right away. underneath me. Hi, Mike. Oh. 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 That's so mean. This is our anniversary mm. show. Yeah. I'll remember that. I'll remember that. So you can you remember that in time out. Raw in this show. No. Things are going to go oh, off the rails hard. in this show. It's off the rails. It is. It's already started. And uh, because we are a front line, uh, we actually didn't make any other plans to celebrate our anniversary. So we're going to answer questions. Grant, <laughs> so, stop messing with the camera. Your I, I'm making it a visual uh, spectacular for medium? the anniversary. So it's, what? I was going to just say medium, but you might actually, actually just get people to throw up because you're changing. <laughs> yeah, just leave it the way it is. No strobe light effects. Right? We can't do that. No, no, no. Lights, no. we promise you because no. we don't have it or else we uh, yeah. do it. We probably yeah. would. The only the only strobe yeah. light we actually have is the... Um, where the is spoiler? The spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll Four get to those later. We, don't forget to like, subscribe, and give a thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, do all that stuff. Do yeah. all that, but we'll get to that later. So we're back here. Batman. Uh, well, <laughs> let's start out with some news. And yes. we already mm. got some questions. So keep coming with the questions. We're going to do a couple of news pieces first. But first up is a new story that I knew a couple of people here would like. And a couple of people here would not have a clue who this is. And that's why I picked it. And that is WWE's Xavier Woods Headlines New DC Universe Game <laughs> Show. Yes. That's, that's awesome. That I know him. I'm glad you know him, <laughs> like Michael. Personally, Michael. You're like, I know him. Like, yeah, I, I know him. him. Like, <laughs> my we're, we're boys, you know. It's, we're good. <laughs> He's on TV. <laughs> He's on TV. I know exactly. that guy. He's, He's on TV. That's why you know him. <laughs> Xavier Woods, he, he has a popular YouTube channel, Up, Up, Down, Down. Um, mm -hmm. and he does all kinds of, all kinds of stuff on there and he's part yeah, behind of the, the scenes at WWE events. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, that's, that's fun. He's, he's got like a big personality. He's, he's a fun guy. So that, that's good. And, uh, he's a huge gamer. He played yeah. against the elites at, uh, what was that? The one with street fighter where there was a street big, fighter tournament, big gamer, comic fan. They're the guys that come out to the ring. They dress <laughs> like different things. Like they've dressed like power Rangers and different things like so that. So they're before. not an actor. Wrestler? No, no they wrestling. are. Yeah, they're no, they do wrestle. They yeah. just come out yeah. of cereal boxes. Yeah, they're cool. he, he's part of a trio called the New Day. They have their own cereal and everything. Bootios. They make Bootios. sure you ain't booty. <laughs> it sounds like they know how to make money. Cat they definitely you know, do know how to do that. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see this game show. I mean, yeah. I want to see the cereal boxes. I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I think that they made a great pick uh, choosing Xavier Woods mm -hmm. for this type of thing. Like, perfect. And you know who's not excited? Yeah, Budio. Me. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we, again, some people are not. Some people are. Uh, in Essence Down X, is this the anniversary episode? Yes. 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 You <laughs> Finally, you it is. We're all here, and, and then, Mike doesn't have glasses on. So we're good. <laughs> I know. We're all we're all solid. Yeah, and exactly. Tubby asks, what game show? We don't know. It's just no. based on the DC Universe network. I, and I then he that. literally followed it up with, I don't care. I, <laughs> so why no, are you asking? Why did you ask? You might because they're playing like uh, comic games and stuff like that. They're uh, One of the first ones they're doing is the old DC, uh, what's it called? Um, crap. 
it's some kind of DC uh, tabletop game from years ago. They're going to play that oh. and different oh, things. Oh, uh, what kind I of what game? What, 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 what tabletop game did they have? It's called DC, the it, tabletop game. <laughs> I forget what the article said. I, it was in the article. Put your beer on it and play it. Yeah, it, it's a great game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I played it a lot when I was a kid. I just don't remember what it's called. Yeah. And what I know Superman it. was in it. <laughs> uh, 1980s DC-based tabletop role-playing game, DC Heroes. Oh, so I wasn't anybody... in them. <laughs> so... I'm sorry. Uh, SM Down says, why isn't this titled the anniversary episode? Uh, sweet and simple, we wanted to get views. So... <laughs> Where's my Abbott and Costello? Because! <laughs> well, a lot of the... Oh. Just a lot of reason, probably, because it's like a lot of people wouldn't care <laughs> if it is yeah. our anniversary episode. Right. So we just okay. announce it on the show itself. You know? so Right. Exactly. For the 70th time now. So, but Batman the anime series people care more about, so yeah. that's why we we will be discussing that later on. But we are going to move on to the next topic, and then we'll answer some questions. Uh, Eternals to have a first MCU gay kiss on the big screen, which is a huge deal because <laughs> Disney has not uh, had a gay kiss. So, oh really? Also, at uh, all? Yeah, at wow. all. On in theaters, uh, that's why. We, well, yeah. at least as a main character, because like in Star Wars, we had it in the background as like a cameo thing. But what's a big deal about this is like why they didn't do it for Frozen, why they didn't do it for Star Wars is because China is a big market for them, and they're like, well, they're probably not gonna like that. So this is gonna be a big move, and maybe this is like testing waters for other stuff. Frozen three, who knows? But I thought that was really cool. Yeah, people are like hard up on Frozen, aren't they? They want that so bad. I, oh, really yeah. I mean, it's representation and all that, so it's definitely we'll see what ends up happening there. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that they're using characters that it's kind of smart that they're using characters that not a lot of people know, uh, as far as the MCU goes. Yeah, uh, with the Eternals. So I mean, I, I just think it's you know it's kind of. Sp- Smart on their part because they might. I don't. I don't know. Like those kind of groups that would give backlash if it's like Captain America. You know what I mean? Which is unfortunate. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> it's a very no, touchy, but, honestly, it's a very touchy subject. Regardless, honestly, I I'm happy they did it, but it doesn't impact me. I wasn't gonna watch Eternals anyway. Really? Okay. I, I watch all the I'm not a movies. fan of it. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the Eternals. That's why. So. I feel like uh, a lot of people would have said that about Guardians, though, right? And then that's yeah. true, such a yeah. Big movie yeah. for them. So I true, always give yeah. every single Same one a like chance. Ant Man, it's kind of like, like how many fans were Ant Man fans when that came out? Yeah. I mean, exactly. I was me, and then there was this I, other person named me. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. Ant-Man. I was not looking forward to Ant Man, but I loved it. Yeah. So you know, it, I think it turned out to be good. Yeah. What's that? Paul Rudd. That was mostly why people saw it. That is true. That is true. All right. So let's get into some of these questions. Uh, first up, only I don't think Michael's seen it yet. Maybe he has, but me and Mike has. And this is crazy because Michael should have been the first one to go <laughs> right? see it. But uh, so how do you feel about the Sonic movie making bank? And we'll discuss the movie too, because like I said, me and Mike wanted to go see it. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not surprising by any means because it's President's Week and the kids are off. And it came out in a really good week. So yeah. I'm like, almost 55. Like 55, yeah, which is a lot better than Birds of Prey from yeah, last I'm week. I'm probably going to go see it this Thursday. I, I think, yeah, I think whenever you get a, <clears throat> a kid's movie being released, <clears throat> I think it's always going to do good. And like you said, the timing was good. They released it at a good weekend, uh, you know, when it's a three-day weekend or whatnot. And uh, again, I, I think people – We'll be surprised when they when they see it. And if you're a fan of Sonic, you'll like it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it was personally the best movie uh, in the world. Um, it definitely had its, you know, flaws. But that's a type of mu- movie where you can't really pick apart because it's a kid's movie. Uh, it's kind of like, it's exactly what I expected it. And it did its job well. Um, but, it, sets up, it sets up what could be possibly... 
a, a better second movie. That's oh, yeah, the thought. second movie I think could be a lot of fun. Uh, but, yeah, they wanted us to go to Olive, Olive Garden. They wanted us to shop for some apartments on Zillow, uh, <laughs> which was interesting as a kid's movie because I'm guessing kids are, you know, they're in the market for yeah. an apartment. So. The, the, the Olive Garden piece, though, was funny. I, I thought it was. You like that? I uh, I I didn't see it with kids either, and I think that's also something that maybe took away from my experience. I did get to see it with Sonic fans, and the Sonic fans liked it, and then me right. and my other friend are like more writers, and and that's kind of you what we went. Making the movie apart piece by piece. They didn't say this. They didn't do this right. No, I mean not as much because you're like I don't want to like I judge it for a Sonic movie. I'm not saying well this is the the Oscars. This is Parasite. No, but. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the writing was pretty. Yeah, exactly. Well, Parasite the movie, but um, no, no, no. I meant Sonic <laughs> winning something at the Oscar. Yeah, no, Sonic is gonna win the Oscar next year. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was okay. I, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm being generous, on that. but I think Michael will very much enjoy. It. Like fans, yeah, really enjoy. Yeah, it. like I said, I'm hopefully planning to go see it Thursday. So I'm hoping to just go see it. Stop nitpicking. No. Nitpicking. This is our oh, wow. point. This is we're, we're critics doing. here. Uh, we have 30 viewers, so thank you guys for oh, watching. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And um, also, Tevia, we answered the Wally West Dr. Manhattan thing last uh, week. So if you want to check that out, we answered that. And then we got some people, lyrics, magic moments this year. Oh, uh, this is a question from Mike. Uh, Sweet Exorcist. Uh, this is something about Power Rangers. I don't know. Uh, I have a question for Mike. I know you hate Power Rangers. Like, do you, like I do, but would you watch a mature R rated version of it? I would. I would. I would. As long as totally. they start they start killing each other, that would be awesome, man. <laughs> They're not killing bad guys, That's just fine. each other. Yeah, just they they kill each other. other. Like, they, they, they had they that. Um, already, they did that they thing on YouTube. Around? They did that thing on YouTube one time, right? Yeah, the fan thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, was, that awesome. was actually good. And if I had something like that, I would watch. Oh, man, I, I would become a Power Rangers fan just to watch that. <laughs> that was well, awesome. Don't worry. This is, hello, Bear Island Comics. Oh, my God. Uh, this is like all-star team of comic experts. How long has this been going on? Way Six too years. long. Six, Six years. years for Way line. too long. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, six, six years front line and then a few years before it's, that it's, on it's, another channel. It's way yeah. too long for him not to notice. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good cover go. up there, Mike. Good cover up. Good. I didn't mean it as an uh, insult. That's what I meant. Yeah, we've been doing this almost 10 years. I would say Frontline was uh, six, and I think Ink was two or three. So we're getting close to 10 years being together. I yeah, we've been doing this. I think we got together. We got together. I think oh, a year before sure. my, before Tommy, right? Or was What's it that? longer? It was we before got Tommy. Sin, I, and me and yeah, Sin I've, over eight years. So we're I've been in. Years. I've been in Texas six years in July. So it was a couple years before that. So it, almost eight, I guess. So. Almost eight. What are we gonna do when we have a decade? We're gonna do a Q and A. We're gonna do Q and A. Yeah, can we think of anything else? <laughs> we're definitely yeah. doing another Q and A. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I missed like some questions, but we're gonna go back to some. Definitely keep going yes. with the questions, but we're gonna do some more news pieces. Maybe so, is hosting game show called DC All Star Games. Yes, that's what he's hosting. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what it's called? It's yes. called uh, DC Comics Tabletop. So look. <laughs> Look for that on your computer. So next up is that Mark Hamill is going to be Skeletor in that new like anime Masters of the Universe, and there's other great actors there too. Oh, Sarah Michelle, yeah, Sarah Michelle Geller, Kevin Conroy, Jason Mewes, of course. Uh, we got Alicia uh, Silverstone. There's so many people here, and also very nostalgic actors. If you haven't noticed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think I love that. It's really cool. I mean, we're used to him as the voice of the Joker. So switch that to Skeletor. I'm, I'm all in for that. And that oh, absolutely. great, great cast of uh, voice actors there, too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that is cool. And uh, and, and I, you know, I've just realized that Mark Hamill did the voice of the Hobgoblin in the Spider-Man animated series, too. Oh, okay. yep. oh. oh. yeah. Oh. Yep. I just realized it because I saw a video on YouTube recently about it and it popped up and there were like 10 facts that you didn't know about the uh, spider-man and i was like yeah mark hamill played the hobgoblin i'm like really i'm like i never knew that huh. 
No, I didn't either. Yeah. That's, but that's cool, man. You got all those voice actors. Might make it for a really good show then. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it's going to uh, be an interesting one. Um, also, guys, we didn't mention this, and we really should. We are doing something somewhat special for the anniversary, is that if you guys make a comment in the chat, um, we are going to pick out random after the show is over for you guys to get 12 comics. So the, the comics, digital comics you'll be getting is Gwen Stacy, The Amazing Spider-Man, and these are all books from this week, pretty much. Uh, X-Men, Morbius, The Immortal Hulk, Hawkeye, Symbiote Spider-Man, Marvel's X, Kylo Ren, Thor, and then two issues, the first and second of uh, Spider-Man Strikes Back, Black Cat. So that's pretty cool. Spider-Man Black Cat Strikes Back. Whichever that one's called, that's the one you're getting. So <laughs> look forward and, uh, to that. Maybe, uh, he mentioned about Kevin Smith's daughter being in the cast for He-Man. He has oh, she? daughter in everything, I believe. Hmm. He got she her is. in DC News. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not surprised, but I'm excited because his daughter has good talent. Yes. And her name's Harley, which yes. is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, any other comments on that? I can't oh. wait for you, man. All right. And then we got the first look at Robert Patterson as Batman, which um, I wanted to like more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so nice of you, Kat. I just call yeah, it hot. a very nice comment. It's uh, it's it's something. It's hot garbage. I, I didn't like. I pulled it up on the article, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't load for me. I guess it said I had to download some app or something like that. Really? Huh. Yeah, That's it weird. wouldn't, it wouldn't pop up for me, so I never got a chance to see it. It's hot garbage. It's, I mean, my question is why? It. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to tell from what we saw. It's a very dark footage, and it's just like a, a camera test, so it's not. I no, I want to give it to. I want to give it a chance, you know. Just I just can't anymore. I know. No, then, then we get the Batman the uh, symbol, the, the yeah. one in front. How it looked? It kind of looked Batman Beyondish to me. It did. I I agree. Exactly. Is there any way we can get a screen share of it? Oh yeah, that's actually. A good I point. love Serenity's yeah. comment. Serenity, I love your comment. There's nothing to like or hate. It's nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> Serenity, okay. I love. You. Right now, I love you, Serenity. Yes, I agree with that statement. It was nothing. Bran, are you Good. pulling it up or do you want me to pull it up? I was going to try to find it, yeah. I will say his chin is weird for Batman. I have it if you want me to just... It's like a oh, okay, then go ahead if you got it. All right, I was going to pause the video. Hey, no, I'll, 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 screen, I'll click okay. it up. Then. Come on. I'm just going to make it play and then we will screen share it. So this is what it looks like, guys. All right. There we go. And I'm yeah. going to mute it, I hope. Here we go. I think this is how you muted. So that's some some of what it looks like. There's the that symbol. Doesn't look like Batman Beyond at all, Tevia. Well, not at it's, all. It's angular. It's a lot more angular than we're used to. Yeah. See, I think it looks like that. Uh, Greg C Capullo. I think it was the New Fifty Two, where it that was his symbol. It was like more the gray yellow. Yeah. Anyway, it kind of looks like Daredevil in that. Right. It looks like Daredevil. Yeah. Like Daredevil or like the that really old know. school Batman. Manos again, very wise. Says it is what it is. Talking, so I think it's worked. Yeah, you'll, you'll have true. to see it in a real like action shot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pass on the movie. <laughs> You're passing well, on a lot of stuff yeah. today, Chris. <laughs> I know. I'm just in a. I'm in a naysayer mood. Yeah. yeah well, stop man. it. This is our anniversary. You're gonna be positive, <laughs> upbeat. I'm positive. I can't wait for AEW tomorrow. Oh my god! Besides the DC Universe TV show and AW. Uh all right. Well, we do got some questions, and this one's from Michael. Are there any Sonic comics that I should pick up? And that's from BrawlyCon. There is a. I mean, only Sonic the Hedgehog is out. But if you want to read some real paperback of Sonic the Hedgehog when they had that cross, that was actually really good. And I think yeah. they had two times that they crossed over. So. I would highly recommend you get that one. You'll definitely enjoy it. Uh, yeah. An another question. Oh, are you going to say any more? Brand? I was just, you yeah, want that's all I was saying. It was a, it was a good one. So. The other questions from Tevia is Birds of Prey movie a bomb? I don't think it did as well in the box office as it could have and should have. What maybe. did it do? It Not got like maybe like 15 million the, the first week weekend. Oh, and yeah, it wasn't. Million? 
I think so. I mean, I'm going to confirm. That's not great. Yeah. That's horrible. Our fun dick boy. Lucky. Lucky. It was 19 million. So Ooh. sorry. That's still horrible. Yeah. yeah. Even for a February movie release, that's well, not I mean, good. Deadpool was February. Yeah. Not February. Deadpool. Yeah. And Deadpool, look what Deadpool did. Deadpool was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, none of it. I mean, Kat, you're the only one that saw Birds of Prey, I think, right? Yeah. Um, and it's an okay movie. I think it's fun. And I think the ending is where I got excited. Like, I wanted to see more after that. I'm like, oh, we finally got the Birds of Prey. It takes a while to get there, though. It's definitely not a perfect movie, but it's that, a fun movie. Is that worldwide or, or? That's, I don't know, actually. I'm guessing that's just the U.S. box office. Club Bavarian. Yeah. Um, another yeah, question. Up, so I wave. And hello, Bavarian. Uh, we'll do one more question and then we'll uh, get to the next news piece. Uh, anyone seen the Castlevania season three trailer? No. No. Nope. They're making a season three. That's I, that's Chris's answer. I, I, I stopped one this. episode in. I didn't. I, yeah, I, it was horrible. I I didn't like it. Yeah, no. So that's your answer. Uh. Man, guys, right. give me something positive to talk about. I'm starting to hate myself. Well, speaking of positive, we're going to mention the Metal sequel has been officially I announced. I hate you, Kat. <laughs> this is not positive. It is. What do you think, Chris? Shut up. Wow. <laughs> You're so wow. So hard. No, I, think, I think, honestly, I'm interested because it's supposed to take place in its own universe now, right? Or is it supposedly still in this the main DC universe? I, I think it, it has something track. to do with the end of Hell Risen is going to say what the DC universe is going to be after Heavy Metal, if I'm correct. Heavy All metal. I know is I get that Hell Risen. It. It's called Heavy Metal. That's it's, what they're it's really it. called. Heavy Metal. Interesting. I'm sorry. I was I was reading the comments. You were, you're talking about the, the death metal thing. Heavy Metal. Or heavy metal. Oh, that's magazine. Is it really called heavy metal? I that's what the article said. If oh, I'm death wrong, metal. Somebody, huh? Death metal? Somebody yeah. called it heavy metal in the article I read. Death I don't metal. think they yeah, I, I saw some about metal. heavy metal. Oh, you should read the magazine article because okay. it's no that's what I for death metal, but okay. No, yeah, everybody's saying in the comments death metal. <laughs> yeah, that was about <laughs> heavy metal, metal, metal the magazine, you know, like Michael. That's what I just said about three times. I I, I said like you said. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear you. Our anniversary, our anniversary <laughs> episode's going with a hit. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. I don't know. But it's supposed to be the sequel it, like to like what happened with the end of Justice League. That's what it's supposed to be. So after it's supposed to be after they've gone through whatever you guys talked about, this flipping door that they went through, mm -hmm. it's supposed to continue through that as the Justice League characters have aged. So that's what it's supposed to be about. That's that's the continuation of Justice League. So it's kind of like if you want to read their continuation of Justice League, well, you gotta read Death Metal. So and that's gonna. No, thank you. Yeah. So. That's how Superman has okay. long hair. At I will not be reading. Point in time, he should have long hair in the main universe, right? Now. Always, right? Always. It's a good look for him. Yeah, I guess. I'm gonna check it out. Super it's, it's an okay, yeah, it's, it's an okay look. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, all right, let's go to the next question, which is not for me and Mike. So we we feel left out for sure. But which wrestler would you want in a DC movie or show, and who would you want them to play? For them, it's Finn Balor as Balor. Jason Balor. Finn Balor. That guy named Balor is going to be Jason. Blood. And then that other okay. person is going to be. Is gonna be a purple flash for them. Interesting choices. Uh, very interesting. My choices. choice: Roman Reigns as Aquaman. Why? So that's basically the. That's Jason Momoa. <laughs> I mean, it's like you're asking like, uh, Jason Momoa. Like. I mean, yeah, I mean, he could. How about he? He's another Atlantean, so they can you know be related or whatever. What about Aqualad? Okay, very well. What about Aqualad in the future? There you go. That, that that baby. Baby. Isn't that dude old? Rowan why, would he, why would he be called Lad? <laughs> That's true. Hey, look. He's a little old to be called Lad. I I don't know. I mean, I don't know who's good enough actor. 
That would be that's, that's sad. That's how it's much hard. Hard. So no, that, that's it's a hard good. transition. Not many people can do it. I'll tell the you, Dean Ambrose, Dean Ambrose can definitely it. make well, actually, his name is John Moxley now, would make for a good Batman villain. Several of them. He's a scare- yeah, he's a scarecrow. Oh. Yeah. I, so, I don't uh, know. You don't know. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. I'll come we'll back to I'll circle back and, and me and Mike will not be on it. <laughs> So look forward to that. Uh, Tevye, I didn't know about this, but he said, question, any opinion on Superman, Lois and Clark show being... Oh, leaked? I didn't know about it either. Was it even films? Like, are you sure? I didn't hear... Like, I oh, didn't even know they filmed it yet. I didn't think they did. They're just casting people, so unless just information was leaked. But also, like, with all these DC, DC shows, they were always leaked before they actually come out. I feel like that's why The Flash was popular, because a lot of people watch it leaked, and they loved it. Um, it's true. Sometimes it's strategy. All right, well, let's go to the next uh, topic, which is the X Factor new costumes. And I guess we could screen share them because that's something visual yeah, everyone. I, I did it. I that did. would be interesting. Oh, as I sold. Actually, I could see that. Yeah, so. Um, we're going to share that. This is some pretty cool sneakers there on the right. <laughs> yeah, the sneaks are nice. Yeah, awesome. Buy them. Like, I like some of the designs. Like, they're a little okay. It's just the um, people that they have with the the thing. Like, um, you know, like with the, the X going across. Mm. I thought that that was actually pretty cool. So, I mean, hey, I think it'll do a success. I mean, X Factor coming back. They look like power. I just want to see Rachel. She's pretty cool. So, although, like, she looks kind of weird at it, but I don't know. I'll, I'll probably give it a shot. Those are all the. I was going to try to get them bigger. Yeah, I couldn't. I don't know. It was kind of a blurry image. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. see it perfectly. It won't even enlarge for me, but yeah. That's so, it. it's interesting. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't like prodigies. That's the one that I really don't like. They all have gears on them. Yeah, Dokken, it's just it's a weird look for Dokken too. It's a weird look for all of them. Bro. It is a weird look like, for all I of them. I like the colors. I think that pops yeah. out just cool. The colors really and, and like, they look like Power Rangers. The sneakers are great. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I had Yeah, they it's do. Def- it's I definitely agree. gonna um, give them their own kind of unique look. <laughs> So, <laughs> they're just trying to go on the runway of in Krakoa. That's that's all they're trying to do. Is that what they're trying to do? Okay. Yeah, they are. Um, this was a question way back, so I'm behind. So I've been trying to keep up with these questions. But Serenity said, uh, this is go back into the Eternals comment, but they they just pretty much said that um, there are gay Chinese movies, like, and they, they name a few. But the thing is, like, that's a... There's gay movies in Japan. Like, it, that's like a genre. I'm talking about mainstream. They don't really have it because it's more of a conservative country. So that's that's why it's like different places they're trying to get money from. So anyways, <laughs> moving on to the next topic, which I guess we could do our show topic, which is Batman miniseries uh, coming out for Batman the anime series with in continuity of, of that show with Paul Dini. And uh, with another writer, I think it's Alan, I forget his last name, but he also was a, a writer on the show. So what do you guys think of that? I'm excited. I can't wait to read the mini, honestly. It's digital, right? Yeah, yeah it's also coming thing. out printed after, so I'm going to get the printed. I'm not going to read the digital. Yeah, forget that digital crap. I'm gonna, yeah, Same thing. Like, <laughs> well, because I, I, I think it's better that way, the physical, because at least this way you get a lot, like you get a book size. Digital, you only get like two or three pages, and then it to be continued next week kind of deal. Right. So you see, like, how, wouldn't that be cool if they released something like that on this prestige format? Like, make it big, make yes. it. Yes. The artwork in that would be absolutely beautiful to see that. I would, I would love to see something like that. Oh, I and I bet people would pay for that because so many people have watched that animated series. Oh, you know? right. It has all the characters here too. It's mm. Tim, it's Barbara, it's Nightwing, it's Batman, and I think that's cool too because it kind of touches on each generation of that show. Uh, I can't wait. I'm so excited for that. 
I wish it was over. Now that Mike said that, I'm like, oh man, I wish they did do it oversized because they do have that format now. Shoot, DC, why are you messing up so much? Yeah, it's like, boy, let's release something really awesome on digital format first. And not even make it oversized when it comes to physical. Oh, DC, come on, guys, wake up. Yeah. But it's still exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it is cool. oh, yeah, I'm still Pumped very for excited yeah. for it. Absolutely. All right, let's go to another topic, which is the Generation Zero one shots connected to the new DC timeline. Uh, mm. A lot of people still want us to talk about 5G for some reason. Every week we keep saying, I got nothing it's to say. It's super, what? <laughs> Since the Super Bowl, they've been talking. Oh, since about. the Super Bowl, oh. I, I thought you said it was it's in the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, it was actually on. Yeah. TV. they paid for an ad. Uh, yeah, no, it's been a while. I would say even before that, I would say since New York Comic Con, they've been acting because that's when the rumors started. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah you're wrong. So, but, but you uh, get you get Bendis connected to some of this this stories too, and the mm. enthusiasm dies, right? All right, and so and now and then, but I guess you'll get I don't know, and then you get one of the stories that continues right off of the the uh, the Wonder Woman issue, it right, so yeah. that continues off of that. So you, what I'm confused about is like there's there's Generation Zero, there's Generation One, there's Generation Five, which is the five G thing. What the heck? I don't understand. <laughs> like I think they're all like different timelines or something. Yeah, like that. okay. Yeah, because each one's fought like before a certain crisis or a rebirth. Right. Each yeah, okay. exactly. Chris is right. It takes place in a different why. crisis or different you'd time period. You'd, you'd think they'd learn after the new fifty two, but nope. Now we're going. So, hey, forget fifty two. It's five G now. Yeah. <laughs> so Generation Five or five G, whatever. That's going to be like the main timeline once this is all done yeah okay. yeah gotcha. i don't care i don't care if wonder woman showed up two years early i just don't yeah it, yeah why do like, i care who was first i re it really doesn't impact it's, the universe that grateful you know greatly yeah i mean it's it's like 80 years too late to to pull that one out right yeah. <laughs> I mean, um i mean it's it's cool that she's getting more spotlight and i I like some of the changes that they're making as far as the history with like Superman's parents and explaining why the just society came together and stuff like that. But it's just ultimately, I don't know. Do you I think just, this is a crucial point for DC right now? I think no. DC needs to stop. I really do. They went from rebooting every 20 years to every f 10 years it's, to five. Now it's like what three since rebirth. I think they're confused. Yeah. Just, yeah, I think they're just oh, yeah. confused. It's it's like when Marvel was doing Marvel now, Marvel now and again, oh, Marvel, yeah, and yeah, really you know, all that stuff. It's kind of yeah, exactly. It's kind of the similar thing. It's like okay, let's try this. Oh, that didn't work, so let's try this. Okay, that At didn't least work. The universe stayed the same. They didn't reboot the universe. Oh it yeah, so it was a little less of a mess in that regard. Yeah, yeah, they never totally rebooted. Yeah. They just did different things. I right. mean, but it's just like people. I feel like are are really keep on dis being disappointed with DC since the new 52 and the new 52 has been out now for like a decade. You know since what I'm saying? This so, show pretty much. Is, yeah. In the new 52 already. Yeah. 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 So, and then you've had, now you've had rebirth and now you're, you're getting this 5g thing and it just seems like, I feel like this is crucial because it's like, we've had all these cancellations of all these other books and probably the reason why they're holding out is because of this 5G situation. And, you know, you get another book that's being canceled, which is Supergirl. Then yeah, not that that book is probably selling all that great either, but it, it's just another character that people might like that they don't get a chance to read now anymore. Yeah, because you know? I think they're not about the characters anymore. And that's such a shame. It's just more about like what events happening. Like what's the this big plot twist? Superman reveals identity. He's like, no, can I just have a genuine story about these characters and yeah, let's go to Supergirl for a second. Cause I'm a huge Supergirl fan. I I'm haven't read her series. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't read her series in, in years at this point because they don't know what the hell to do with this character. Yep. And, I was and hoping they like put her out. I'm upset because I was hoping maybe yeah. after this whole uh, Batman that laughs, it would be on an upward, you know, we'd be on that upward swing again with Supergirl. Nope. No, we're just canceling her. Why? I think the Batman who laughs is a show. I like, don't know what to do with her. But yeah, everything with the TV show just doesn't have a comic, which is still crazy to me. If you yeah. can sell a TV show, how can you not sell a comic book? It makes um, no sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go to some questions here. So, oh, unless we have more thoughts on Supergirl and, and just I, I hope when it comes back, 
and you know it eventually will, obviously, that it's good. <laughs> I hope that we're all no positively. I hope we're all talking positively this time next year about DC. Let's just do it one year at a time at this point. I'm just upset Dial H is over is, is endings. I really don't have any other DC book that I like. So <laughs> Teen I'm Titans. Like, oh yeah, Teen Titans. You're right. I have Teen Titans. Yeah. White Knight. White Knight. And that's it. That's it. I, I, just wanna... make, I guess, but that's not even there anymore. I just want to piggyback off the uh, sweet exorcist is he says, uh, I'm in the minority, but I love the new 52. Um, it was a mature version of DC comics that got me back into reading them. The characters have to grow. And I, I want to agree with sweet exorcist because at that time I got back into comics and um and then what happened was is the new 52 got me into dc and then it just kind of fell apart like halfway through the rails you know so yeah the new 52 i think had some definitely shiny oh yeah i think yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I was about to ask if that was I just was gonna say yeah. i thought it was my I thought it was me at first but yeah, I think that the new 52, uh, there was definitely, I had more favorites in there, like Green Lantern when that started, Batman, Batgirl. Yeah, I mean, even best, uh, Green Lantern right now, Grant Morrison has, that's another trip in and of itself with the with the Green Lantern series. Yeah, I missed yeah. the way Vendetti did it and, and Jeff Johns before him. I love, he, he made me love Green Lantern, Jeff Johns. I yeah, would say oh, at right. this point in DC, this is probably the time period in my whole life that I've liked the least DC comics, which is crazy. Right. Like, Me too. Yeah. And I'm including the new 52. Like I was just saying, there was books I was actually excited to oh, read. Yeah. I was reading a good amount in the new 52 and it, it's like, I was similar to Mike as far as DC goes. Cause I'd only started reading DC a couple of years before that. And so it was mostly new to me. So um, fans of things will never be happy with changes. I was in a live stream with one of the other bat fans and have ranted about the new bat suit. I mean, we, we are always open to change and I think Definitely. we just criticize what, you know, what we like and dislike, but, um, yeah, we're always open for change and we're in, if that's what you're talking about with the Batman, Robert Patterson suit, I'm, I'm not closing off that he's going to be a horrible Batman because we saw one suit, you know, right? No, oh, like absolutely. giving our comments on what we saw. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm. A, I wasn't gonna see the movie anyway. To be honest, I'm not the movie guy. I'm the gaming comic guy, so for me, movies are whatever. But um, again, we don't uh, hate on everything. Again, it's like what Manos just said: New Fifty Two wrecked DC fandom. It was one reboot too many. How many reboots is too much? Already, New Fifty Two was too much, and now we're going into five G. And then, if we're following the timeline that Doomsday Clock ended us with, where we're doing this, that, and the other thing. We're going to have at least another three or four reboots after this. Yeah. I don't know. That's too many. And I don't even want to say New 52 ruined things. I think, yeah, maybe it was the start of it. But before, the reason New 52 happened is because DC wasn't selling any comics. Right. So yeah. you, whatever happened before that also was ruining things. We can't be like, in our minds, like nostalgia is such a big thing where it's like everything was pretty, everything was rainbows and butterflies, but it wasn't. So. Yeah. And the crazy thing is when, I mean, New 52 had its fans, as, as you know, we've documented right here. Uh, but Rebirth, like, brought a lot of people back to it, and they were, like, on a solid track. And then it just kind of all fell apart because they just started doing weird things. <laughs> so it's like, you, you had it, and then you lost it. I don't know, for at least for us. So Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so we got a couple questions, and we'll get to more uh, topics. Uh, what did you all think of Ben Affleck pretty much as Batman? Um I mean, it was hard to tell because we didn't get a Batman movie and the scripts are really bad. So I don't really have a, I think, educated answer to that. I was never a fan of the casting. I think he did okay. Um, definitely not my favorite Batman. It was like in the middle. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, do you have an opinion on Ben Affleck? Uh, he was uh, He was all right. You know, it was kind of hard to see him as Batman, to tell mm -hmm. you the truth. I, I just, it's just not, he's not your, you know, first person that you expect to be Batman. So it was kind of weird. And I think. But I mean, really did you ever think George Clooney would be Batman either? 
No, but then again, I wasn't so like. I, I, I guess I just didn't care because it was like there were so far and few between like movies of At superheroes. Time, yeah. it, it wasn't really that big of a big of a deal. But then again, no, those George Clooney movies weren't that great either. No, you know? not so. at all. I mean, he George Clooney was an okay Bruce Wayne, not so much a Batman. Right. Yeah, uh, exactly. Those movies suck. Uh, <laughs> it's not, all you had at the time, you know? It's all you had. It, it's I, kind yeah. of funny. Like, remember I, I mentioned to you guys on GroupMe that, or not on GroupMe, on Messenger, that Alicia Silverstone was, like, going to be at Megacon. Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, Alicia yeah. Silverstone. I'm like, what the heck? Why would she come to Megacon? She does all this other you stuff. Like, oh shit, she was Batgirl. I totally forgot well, about that. Yeah, she's More gonna be in this. Fans, really? Yeah. That's why she's gonna be there. Yeah, but she's also gonna be in this He Man thing now. So, oh, uh, true. She, she's got a lot of things. She's doing it to promote for sure. She wants to make that money. There you uh, go. This is from Michael, I think. Have you read Tangle and Whisper? That's the Sonic book. Yeah. Right? Yes, I did. Yeah, and it's actually a pretty good series. I'm trying. Well, let's go to another uh, news story. So, let me see. Pulling it up. All right. Uh, next up is cable and Deadpool team up issues Again. coming up for cable. So, money. Cool. Yep. Uh, that's basically it. But I'll probably read that because I love Deadpool and I would like to see how he teams up with the younger cable. Um, oh, it's the younger no. cable. It's the younger cable because the other cable is dead, Michael. Remember that. Right. Yeah. So it's going to no, be just interesting, like that first meeting with a younger cable instead of an older cable. Yeah. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm interested in seeing how this works. And just for anybody who doesn't know, you know, cables dating the cuckoos, right? All of them. All them. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. I that mean, I, I can't weird. understand That's how you cool can date you. five clones of Emma Frost, but I mean, hey. So yeah, so Cyclops' son is dating clones of Emma Frost. That's that, that, that makes it extremely weird. He <laughs> must be proud somehow. Uh, I'm curious how they're gonna write that, but I'm looking yeah. forward to I it. I can't wait to find it's out be how interesting. they write that. Mm, yeah. I saw one of the covers. I actually want the cover just because it looks so funny. I really want it. I might get it. I'm ex I'm interested in a cable book. I think it's been a while and I like cable. I, I that's we, we already talked about the news of cable getting a book. We we didn't even talk about Deadpool, but we're getting the issue, guys. Um, the next question from Bavarian says, "Are you guys good at trivia?" I just came back from trivia and did not know the comic questions. I suck. Well, we've done trivia in the past, and it was usually between me and Brant. Yeah, I suck yeah. On that one. So. I was yeah. kind of. I'm just slow when it comes to trivia, like. My brain doesn't process things right, right? It's just like uh, Spider-Man's first name is who? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Peter Parker. Like, it takes me a little while to process things. Yeah, it happens. I'm trying to look for – I just lost my place for all these. All right, here we go. We actually got, like, so many comments, so thank you guys. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm trying to – find them all anyways i'm gonna have to scroll up so we're gonna do another uh news piece so uh next up is that green lantern celebrates 80 years with a one shot um i mean i'm excited who's writing it everyone it's yeah, a, it's gonna be it's a, it's not a Grant morrison okay so maybe i'll read that. i mean i'm sure he's gonna do a story oh, but of course of course but jeff johns will do one too then and i'll skip problem. over that story yeah, no, and read all the other it. stories Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. I'm also like interested because it seems like they're not just celebrating Hal, you know, they're celebrating Jessica and, you know, Boz and Kyle and yeah, everyone else. That's what's going to be kind of cool about it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. uh, all right, let's go to. Spider-Man's first name is obviously Spider, duh. <laughs> oh, of course. How do you not know that? Oh, damn, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I can't find Bavarian. Uh, so Andy, it was we talked about it. I think it was on one of the covers. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a solicitation. It. Yeah, it's in solicits also. What it's like to be dating all five cuckoos and how crazy it is. Yeah, he must be like he must feel like he's the luckiest guy. He's like, yeah, man, <laughs> he's dating the same girl. I'm getting all five, five girls the same way. 
I feel bad for those cuckoos though, because they're just like probably so like jealous of each other and it's gonna really make some toxic book. relationship for them. I cannot wait to read this book. I've never been as excited to read a cable book as I am right now. Oh my god. All right, well, let's go to uh the next question. Uh, unless we have more. I know it's just me and Mike who want to talk Green Lantern. Um, Supergirl canceled. We talked about that. Man Bat's getting a series this May. There it is. We're talking about DC. Oh, this this is the wonderful uh picture. Aren't aren't they supposed to look different? Or are they not? They are. There's some underneath that you don't yeah, see. Yeah, it's cut off the image. They, they're not as important. <laughs> <They're definitely laughs> look at him. He's like, he's like, yeah. hell yeah, I'm the man. That's what he looks like on there. Yeah. But the uh the man bat book, when I was reading it, I'm like, this is the exact book of Morbius. This is exactly yeah. a Morbius book, but in the Batman world. <laughs> That's what I looked at it. <laughs> wow. Uh, they He's got a good cable package, real Mano said about cable and the cuckoo. That's awesome. Uh, That's, oh, oh, God. God. He's got those premium channels and everything. Uh, everyone, everyone wants cable. Uh, this is a question from SM Down. How, for me, I guess. How much do you have like Folly Daughter planned out? Do you have five issue comic already written or write each? Each one comic by comic. Um, I mean, I plan out by arc. Um, and right now I have eight issues fully written. And then I have the next arc planned and then future arcs planned as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, all right, let's go to some more questions. I finally found my freaking plays. But thank you guys for all these comments. I think that's the one thing that StreamYard is bad in. Like, you can't figure out your place in the comments. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to find. Yeah. To go back. Like, I wish you could, like, highlight it and stays, like, like you don't lose your place for somehow, you know? I wish. I mean, it's it was, like, it took me a good five minutes to figure out where I was. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, Man Bat. I just wanted to say, like, yeah, that, that shows, like, how these – like, that's not a character I'm going to get excited for. Who is, like, oh, my God, I need a Man Bat series. That's amazing. Like It's a Morbius oh, it, book. It is definitely a Morbius book, but yeah. Marvel comes out with a, so many more books where they're allowed to come out with a Morbius. DC has not many, so it's a little harder. And out of all books, too, it's Morbius. I mean, it's Man Bat. It's yeah. like not even a major character. It's like, hey, let's do Man Bat, you know? It's crazy. I don't I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, all right, let's go to next thing, which is New Valiant Shadow Man series. That was actually announced yesterday. So, uh, let's, uh, Michael, I, I'm sure you got... Yeah, I was actually very um, happy to hear that they have a new Shadow Man volume that's coming out because um, I remember reading the volume... Uh, months ago that they were going to make a new shadow man uh as the months progress so i'm actually really happy to see where the story is gonna you know where the new story is gonna lead on to from what we saw last time so i'm actually looking forward to uh reading that from valiant yeah it's it's one of the first valiant in this version of valiant comics that i read was that, that first shadow man series so uh um i was really interested in that series. I, I was actually reviewing that for, for ink um, back in the day, but uh, I think it's interesting that Colin Bunn's going to be writing it too. So I'm, I'm curious to see what he does with the character. Oh, this is a good question. Uh, Real Mano says, what's a good Valiant book? Check out. I've only read faith. Um, I would say the one that I've, Oh, we're going to say Michael. Yeah. I was I just going to say, down there. I'm just saying Exo Man of War yes. definitely is the number one pick. Oh, it's faith. Okay. Yes. Is another good one. What's that other one you read, Michael, with um it was way back and he crossed over with Exo Man of War, the ninja. Oh my god. Ninja. Oh ninja. 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 That's yeah, it. Ninja. Ninja. Good. And and the Eternal Warrior Galan. Oh my god, the first volume yeah. of Eternal Warrior. Yes, I love that one. Does that, the new Exo Man of War come out soon? It comes think, out yeah, uh, March. Okay. March. Yeah. I'm pretty March? sure. I thought it was uh, yeah, I thought it was March. I'm actually going to check that one out. 
It's yeah. just good. I have a good yeah, feeling. Me too. I'm going to look at Because I read the lot. I read the original Exo Man of War, and I like that. Yeah. And obviously, Venditti wrote the it first one. Yeah, yeah, Robert Venditti was awesome. I yeah. got to meet him when we went to go get uh, – we went to the mm-hmm. Valiant booth, and we actually ended up – I got an Exo shirt. Mike got a Bloodshot shirt. And if you got a shirt, you got a gold uh, Exo Man of War number one, and Robert Venditti would sign it for free. Yeah. So we he used to be on – He got yeah, it. He, he used to be on the wall behind you, but – But the couch is now up here. Yeah. I mean, the one good thing about Valiant is that you could pick up one series and it's complete. Like even if it's Exo Man of War, it's always a very different run. It's very defined by <laughs> by a run, which is really cool. Um, but the one I've connected with the most is that Jeff Lemire Bloodshot. Like that is a book I really loved. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Me, I, 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 I was gonna say real quick. For for me, Faith is one of my favorites from Valiant, and like when they first relaunched. I really enjoyed the the Harbinger series and Archer and Armstrong. And then what I was going to say was I feel that uh, Jason David Frank's Bloodshot did a really good job on the uh, – they did a, a YouTube movie series, I think it was parted, through Valiant and Bat in the Sun, which is why it's hard for me to send, see Vin Diesel as Bloodshot now because my mind is still set on Jason David Frank as Bloodshot. I think it, I think Vin Diesel's is going to be a better one, but I think especially because of Fast and the Furious and a, and a lot of other movies, Vin Diesel ha- has been in that is a lot like Bloodshot. Yeah, definitely. It's just I wish they would have just stuck with that. Then, st- well, goodbye, Michael. Fine, I'm talking about your universe. Right. Yeah, he doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, I I feel like they should have just skipped out on making the other one on the the web series then and just gone with the movie. I agree with that. Um, are you excited for bl- the Bloodshot movie? I don't know if I'm excited, but I'm going to see it. Looks and I, I hope to be um, surprised by it because I'm not like a big action action movie person. Like I'm not a Fast and Furious, you know, uh, those type of movies fan. So I'm curious. <laughs> Fast and Furious is ridiculous. Actually. Yeah. That's going to be a movie a trailer. that goes on forever. Oh, for sure. Because it has a franchise. There's a trailer where there's like a grappling hook for a car. There's <laughs> like, in the oh, that was toys cool. right now for the Netflix series. There's a ne- oh yeah, there is a Netflix series coming. Um, yeah, I had no so. until I got Tommy his Happy Meal. That's crazy. All right, well, let's go to the next news topic, uh, which is Mark Wade becomes publisher of Humanoids. Um, I was surprised by that. What does that mean for Mark Wade's Marvel career? I feel like he's going to be really focusing on being an indie creator. Good. But, yeah, I haven't read anything from Humanoids that I've loved, but I'm curious to see what's going to happen here. Changing. They're, yeah, they. that's the one that has the whole ignition line going on, right? Mm, um, yes. It's like they launched the superhero universe. It, I mean, Mark Wade is a smart choice. He's been he was uh, instrumental with CrossGen with uh, Boom at one time. Um, he's you know he's obviously known for his Marvel and uh, Marvel work above everything else. I think. Um, so yeah, I mean he's and, and Flash I think uh, as well. So he, pro- prolific guy and uh, a lot of experience, a lot of insight there. So. Yeah. Uh, another question: Any opinion on the new Saw movie coming out? Um, I actually haven't seen the original. I'm I'm oh, big. Oh, they're they're new 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 coming out? Yeah, I think they're making a remake. Oh no, thank you. Never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, the first one, which I mean, I saw a lot of them, but the first one for the time, it was really, it was really good, actually, really original. Um, but then it comes to a point, just like every other horror movie, where it's just beat to death and it's kind of not the best anymore. So I don't know what you can do differently uh, to make this appealing to a newer, you know, a new audience again. You know, I mean, does it really need to be rebooted? It's not that old. So supposedly it's not a remake. I thought it was. Oh, uh, um, okay. But let me see. New Saw movie, 2020. Um, it's called Just Saw. So, Spiral from really the Book saw. of Saw is an upcoming... No, it is a ninth installment, so that's even worse. I feel like I'd rather of it be to reboot. Uh, saw is the new horror classic? No. Uh, I wouldn't say it's... I mean, yeah, that's hard. I do think people go back to Saw and say, okay, that is a, you know, a definition of a... Uh, um, yeah. Gore porn or whatever it's called. I mean, I uh, definitely think it's it it's up there with like 
horror movies of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like people know what Saw is because yeah, I'm sure they've sure. seen a movie. Uh, you you know, go to I'll Universal you know. Horror Nights, like most of the time they always do a Saw house. Um, so uh, people know the franchise. It's just, it comes to a point where it just needs to stop. You don't need any more of the, that type of movie. They had Jigsaw, but then you can say the same thing about Halloween and then it recreated itself. And that last Halloween movie was really good. So right. yeah, we could say that for that. Friday the 13th and, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Those, um, see, those yeah. remake slash the start remake over. Really good. None of those. But I think the Friday. only movie I've ever walked out on. I was sitting on Which a one? Friday the thirteenth. I walked with, out. Uh, that's the one with Dean, right? From uh Supernatural. Or no, was that the other after movie. him? That was the other movie. That was um hmm. Was he in Friday the thirteenth? He was. I feel like he was in that Valentine. It was He was in a few movies. Dean made it into a few I forget his name. Uh with Jensen Ackles is his name. No. Other guy. Oh, Jared, Jared no. Padalecki. Jared Padalecki, yeah. That's that's not Dean. Then. I'm he is no, a Sam. Sam. He is. Daniel Panavaker was in that movie, too. Wow. Okay. Uh, very interesting CW stars. But, all right. We went off track. We're going to talk about Jason Aaron on a King Conan title. And Michael Wan discussed that. Yeah, like I was saying... Um, for that to, you know, in a new comic book, like, uh, I'm trying to figure out, I heard the name Jason Aaron from somewhere. On oh. Thor. Thor. That's one of the big ones. Thor? Season. No, I, I, I couldn't remember, but I was just saying, okay, now that you brought it up, I'm actually very interested to see how he's going to <clears throat> write Conan. It's right up his alley, something interesting. A very long, epic run on Thor. Yeah. Um... I feel like it, what else has he done that relates to it? Um, trying to think. Anyways, Thor is the big one. Uh, all right, let's go to the last news piece, which is that Luke Skywalker gets a yellow lightsaber in Star Wars. And um, unless Tom Brandt, did you want to say something oh, that I missed you for something? Me? No, no, oh, no. I thought you put your hand up. No, no, no I, was, I was going whoopee on the lightsaber. Oh, okay. Yellow lightsaber, okay. baby. Someone got the last part. Um, because <laughs> in the uncut Jedi, Return of the Jedi movie, at the very beginning of the movie, Luke is just assembling his new green lightsaber. So I'm guessing the yellow lightsaber is going to be his segue between the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So we won't be seeing Luke with his classic green lightsaber until we get to Return of the Jedi. And how is he going to lose his yellow lightsaber then? It'll My be interesting. thought was that it's connected to the last Star Wars movie because Ray got a le yellow lightsaber in the end. So are well, they trying to answer those questions? The the thing with Ray's yellow lightsaber was, and I hate this because I'm going to sound like I'm a smart ass because I've, I've looked into Star Wars, Jedi Knights that have the yellow lightsaber are not considered Jedi Knights. They are the guardians of the Force and the Jedi Order. And that's why their lightsabers were yellow. And that's why Rey has a yellow lightsaber at the end of the Star Wars line. So she's not a Jedi Knight. She is going to... It's something along the lines of she's going to be a guardian of the Jedi Orders and, and the Force and whatnot. Uh, well, Tevia says it doesn't matter in the end. But it's a big, well, part. Tevia this is be a big part of the story. Tevia doesn't like Star Wars anyway. So it doesn't matter in the end for him. For me, it does. Uh, all right. Well, those are all the news pieces, and we lost Michael again. Um, right as it mattered to Michael, it mattered to Michael that <laughs> Luke Skywalker's star lightsaber it doesn't was matter to me. I don't care what color <laughs> lightsaber he has. I mean, it really doesn't matter what color a lightsaber is. It's just a crystal, honestly. In the end of the day, it matters. I, I always thought, and I've I've said this in the show before. I always thought before I saw Star Wars that it was like a moon ring, where it was about your feelings. <laughs> a lightsaber that that embodied your emotions so when you're mad it's red when you're happy it's like green exactly yeah. that's like no like you've turned to the dark side it's, it's like red. Be I know what it is, let's be honest that's kind of what i bet george lucas was like playing with his moon ring he was like oh that's a cool concept it's yeah red. Man, that's, that's great guy. i like that Man, I won't steal too much. Like you'll have to find the crystal, so we won't steal too much for the moon ring. He didn't want to. He didn't want to get sued by the people who made moon rings. There you go. That was yeah. it. Exactly. Um, All right, Mike. It's your segment, bud. 
All right. Under the radar time, where we're going to talk a book that we read. So my under the radar book I want to talk about this week is the milestone issue of Sonic the Hedgehog, issue number 25. Why are you laughing? Who? Just, Me? just that. Um, I think Brant was laughing because of just the segue you went to your under the radar. I, it's all good, Michael. Oh, I thought, I thought just my ignore. connection was acting up or something. No, no, you're good. You're oh. good. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, so Sonic the Hedgehog is number twenty-five. It's been a long while since we've read another Sonic book because the movie recently came out and they were focused on that a little bit. And I liked how they went back to the Zoombot story where uh, Starline brought in um, the Sinister Six to the universe with Dr. Eggman. And um, we see that this uh, metal virus that is happening with uh, the Sinister Six wants to take over Dr. Eggman and Starline, um, you know, controlling robots and whatnot matter so as they both both eggman and starline they ask sonic and his friends um for how the six now has the chaos emeralds which is uh, like super powerful and they could take over the whole um the whole land which is why it's so powerful um and they could command thousands of zumba uh, Zoom bots all that whole plan of how to stop this is it just metal virus from spreading. It was like so much in detail. I... Huh? Yeah, he, I think you yeah. like you because uh, I heard something about Zumba, and I'm like, there's no way Zumba's in the book you're talking about. <laughs> no, Zumba, Zumba. 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 Okay. however you say I, it. I think the connection, like put that word together and it I don't know you're skipping a little so that's why hey, you're good kinda, all right is it better now hmm. I mean we could hear you all right but well anyway just to end it um like uh, you have to read the book to find out more information about more of the metal virus and how they have to come up with a plan for it to stop spreading and to get the Chaos Emeralds back because the Sinister Six has caused a massive destruction and that's where it's to be continued. Uh, I thought this issue was excellent and amazing artwork as always and glad to see that Sonic the Hedgehog comic is back in session for me to read. So I'm going to go to Brandt, Under the Radar book for you this week. Mine is uh, Deja Thoris, number three. Uh, I'm really still enjoying this uh, this particular series uh, because it's it's still centered around the the new um, people in power trying to take out her entire line, and it's just progressed. Like at the end of last issue, um, they had sent uh, Banthas, I think they're called Banthas, um, to attack them, and they were just trying to kill them out uh, by like just um, not so so it wouldn't be uh, tied back to them, but now because that failed, they're like, just send the warships after and kill them all, wipe them off the planet. And it's the, the battle is heating up because now Deja's is trying to get her entire line, her entire family together uh, safe. And at the same time, they're trying to, to fight off this entire armada of ships that are coming at her. Uh, so it's, it's a really good read. All right. Uh, let's go to cat. Mine was the only one. The only one I was able to pick oh, this week. Wait, I was, oh. Hold on. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just answer Sweet Exorcist. Uh, what company mm -hmm. puts out the Sonic comic? Um, publishing brings out Sonic. Okay. So go on, Cat. Um, yeah. So mine was no problem. Mine was uh, Hawkeye because it's the only one I was able to pick, but I did like this issue. And I don't know. I feel like it's a fun book. It, it's just, it's getting better and better for me. I like the twists and turns they're going with Ronan. Uh, it's funny. And I think it's a good tone for the character. All right. Sure and sweet. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's oh, go on yeah. now. Um, Brant wanted to talk about huh? Hawkeye. I'm, I'm sorry. We can, yeah, we can talk about it later. No, no. I mean, we're on it. Okay. Um, okay go ahead. 
I yeah, I, I like the issue. I, I like a lot of the stuff with with him and the girlfriend, um, and and the kid. That, that whole sequence. Every time those three were on together, it was just it was hilarious. And I, I love that it's uh, both Black Widow and Daredevil that figure things out. And it's just it's playing into some interesting uh, interesting um, what do you call it face offs there. I, I can't wait to see Daredevil and him. Uh, you know, dealing with this next issue. So that's all. Okay. All right, cool. All right, let's go on to now, Mike. You're under the radar book this week. Um, it continues to be Dollhouse Family, uh, issue four. Uh, really great book. Uh, it's just this house is just creepy as all can be. Um, and we get to see the house kind of get passed on from i guess generation to generation at first you got to see the little girl she had it uh her mom wound up i guess getting killed or whatever it was and now the girl grew up and now her daughter's interacting with the house as well and um the cliffhanger is absolutely outstanding but uh it's it's a book that you have to read like i don't want to spoil it it's just really really good and uh, I, I have a feeling like this book would read really well in trade. Um, so I definitely recommend it. But it's such an awesome read. I love this book. If you want to make a book for Mike, just get a creepy house. Like, that's all. Dude, yeah. <laughs> this is like the like key <laughs> house. It. This is I like lock and key, but like a miniature version of it. I told you, uh, right, Mike? And now yeah. you have lock and key. Have you finished it, though, yet? Oh yeah, yeah. I finished Lock and Key this weekend, this past weekend. I've been I've been out of chats. I didn't know. So now you know for sure that this is Joe Hill. I love Joe Hill. This is classic Joe Hill. But yeah, it's good, man. It's just like instead of keys, it's a little dollhouse with living people inside of it. And uh, like I said, I didn't spoil anything because I really want people to read this. Um, but pick it up and trade when it does come out. I recommend it too. I love this series. I'll definitely check it out. I think in trade, I, it, it seems like a cool book. I'm, I'm sad it wasn't on my radar with issue one because you know once you have a, like a book passes so many issues, you're just like ah, yeah, I want to go back and read well, it. But like, where's the time? The, the beautiful thing is it's a mini, so you'll be able to grab. The oh, is it? Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not ongoing. You will have to let me know if it sticks to landing. It better stick to landing. It's Joe Hill. Let's see. I mean, I yeah. I actually right, like so uh, the Chris. basket full of heads. I didn't like that from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, uh, he he does well with his endings. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right, so turn. Chris, we're your last one for <laughs> <I'm delayed. laughs> Michael's very delayed. So Michael, it's you're fun. delayed. I'll do mine. Leave I'm, this and come back. Leave and come back because you are too delayed and yeah, every, everything is cutting off everywhere. My book goes to I actually was between this or Venom. I love Venom, but this book I like more. Uh, Spider-Man from the game verse, the black hat strikes issue number two. Again, if you played the DLC, you already know where the story is going, how this, how the story is going to end. And um, now my head is, uh, is in frame. I, I love the art in this book. I love the story. I love the extras that they threw in to this book that they didn't show in the game. I love the flashback where Spider-Man and black, you're kind of reminiscing Spider-Man and black cats relationship from the beginning when they first got together. Now you're jumping into the present where Pete's back together with Mary Jane and black cats now back in his life. We're not sure if the baby or the son, her son is really Pete's or not. And Pete mm -hmm. wants to help her because Pete's not sure if it's his son. We who played the game know the answers already, but those of you that haven't played the game, no spoiler. This is a good, a good uh, follow-up issue. Yeah. I liked it. Uh, I read one and two this week. Uh, cause you guys told me to read one and you said, Oh, if you like Felicia, you're going to like this. And for me, I feel like she is written so well, um, in this book, it's like better than the old, the main black cat series. Um, I just love her personality. I love how seductive she is towards Peter. I just love, I, I love how <laughs> like, obviously we don't know, but I love how it could be possibly his kid. And then I like how Mary Jane is jealous of the whole situation. Like she tries not to be, but 
she really is kind of you see her at the end and she's like oh boy this is great you know you should really check out the game series the first volume and velocity mike I oh i thought you meant just get the game yeah, no, I'm like, yeah and i don't have a ps4 <laughs> well, I, meant the com- I know he doesn't have a ps4 so I, I didn't like we'll see i didn't like that first series because it had mr negative in it and i hate uh, that and that's the character game. Okay, I so that's the game. Okay. Yeah, you you probably if you didn't like the first one, I don't think you'd like the second either. The second one wasn't as good, I don't think. Yeah, right. no, it didn't pull as strong, but this one is pulling. This up. one is really good, and I, I love the dynamic between them two. And and just she keeps on skirting that issue of whether it's Peter's kid or not. I mean, he's like he tries to ask her in this issue, and she's like, "We'll, we'll talk about that later." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, dude, come on. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's really good. And the art, I, I love the art in this book too. So it's really nice. Right. Um, also, well, be- oh, you go, Michael. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say before we go into like the big books, I do want to repeat that if you guys, Wait, what were the under the radar since I left? Uh, Black Cat Strikes too. Yeah, the one okay. we were just talking about. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so before we get into big books, I do want to state if you comment in the chat once again, um, you get. 12 Marvel books that came out this week and one that came out a month ago, which was the Spider-Man Strikes Back. So definitely comment in the chat and you'll get digital comics for that. So um, also access questions throughout because we were trying to make this a Q&A for anniversary to, to make it somewhat special. Special. Right, so we'll go with Mike now with the big books. Oh, oops. Sorry. There you go. I'm sorry, I clicked it again. Very- uh, all right, guys. So we're moving on to the big books. Once again, this is spoiler territory. So if you haven't read your books, which I hope you have by now, we're going to be talking about spoilers. And as long as we go with our big books, we'll be doing our top five. If you guys want to you know, go down the line with us when we talk about our number five and you want to put your number five, We'll try to give you guys a shout out at the same time. So the book that we're going to be talking about first, and this is, I, I read two more books, but this was one of the two books that I still have not read. And this is uh, the Batman Pennyworth uh, Rest in Peace issue. Um, I didn't get a chance to read it. I'll probably read it tomorrow morning before I go to the comic book store. Uh, but was this book any good, guys? It was. I, yeah, it wasn't. For me, it wasn't like perfect, right? right? I don't think it's something you need to like desperately buy, especially no. if it's a lot of money. But I, it also wasn't bad either. But also for me, because of how Alfred died and because of the structure of this issue, I don't know if it was as emotional either. Because like a lot of the characters, especially the Rick Grayson aspect of it all, they there's not like a lot of bonding moments. It's a lot of yeah. like, I'm going to tell my story and walk out of a bar. Uh, they never bond. It's just like the way they structured it. So it wasn't well, bad by any means, but... Well, it, Dick, was it one story? It was, it was one story, one kind story of story with other mini stories connected to it. So it was uh, like it's, a whole Bat family get together, like a family together time after Alfred's, or he opens up a foundation in memory of Alfred, and then they're all together and they're all trying to get Bruce to realize, you know, he has to be Batman. Tim starts it off with saying, you know, I came into your life when uh, you lost Jason, when Jason died, and I tried to be there for you, and I put on the R and, and I picked you up. I won't do it this time unless you ask me. And he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to ask that. And then he gives a toast and everybody does a toast in order. Uh, and they, and it starts with two Alfred and then you get a flashback. Tim has a memory with Alfred. Damien's was, I feel the, the deepest because Damien still blames himself for Alfred's death. He had something to say. I feel like everyone else is just yeah. like, remember this, you know, yeah. like at least well, Damien had a story. Right. I feel like even though Rick didn't have his memories, he still had something to add at the end. Right, you got uh, that so, Nightwing story in the end. Yeah, but Jason was just like, "I'm not gonna crucify you like everybody else." But while I'm at it, and while I'm here, I'll, I'll still tell you, you know, what mm-hmm. you're doing wrong. <laughs> so it's like, well, you just kind of did what you said you weren't gonna do, but sure. Uh, but no, yeah, it was it was okay. It was like if you're a huge Batman fan, huge Alfred fan, uh, you get it for that reason, just for the you know, just because you kind of love those kind of stories, but it's not necessary. Um, I don't but, think Alfred's death was necessary, but that's well, a whole different story. Yeah, that's definitely a yeah. whole different story on that. Regard. I just think at this point, when it comes to Alfred, I think now that this issue came out, like we need to let him go and let people miss him. So if he does come back or when he does come back, 
like people will welcome him back. Yeah. What what I didn't like about this book was how angry Barbara was. Oh my god, right? Yeah. She has no yeah. point to be out of character. Yeah. She was a little bit too frustrated and angry. Yeah. I also didn't like the art for her story, even though I thought the the story was cute. It, it was like really puffy and yeah, just, it tried to copy her artwork from from when she had the purple costume, I believe. They tried to, and it just didn't work. Uh, definitely not. Like, definitely no. not as good. It looked more like Pokemon than, than that. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> like, that's a good example. It's like old yeah. school manga Pokemon yeah. looking, and I did not like it. And, yeah, I mean, I agree with Brent. If you love the Bat Family, you know, we don't get to see these characters enough in one room. So that was nice, but yeah. I don't think it's, like, something you got to desperately yeah, buy. It was nice. It was a nice issue yeah, we gotcha. do have one quick question you guys definitely keep coming with the questions but uh just i know that ha half of you us have seen this but lock and keys tv show people uh were wondering if we watched it i have not seen it yet um, I have not had a chance no, to i'm on the second episode of it so uh, i've watched half of it uh so far we're, we're just doing one episode at a time um we're I'll, I'll say this, and I, I think Mike agrees, um, especially after reading it, that we're just a little bit disappointed that it's not a little bit darker. Um, they toned it down for the Netflix uh, show. Yeah. Which you shouldn't do that with Lock and Key, in my opinion. Right. I agree. It's, it's still correct. a good show. Right. I mean, you can it, you, got, you can be 14 to watch this show. And um, it pushes – it. like you can tell like they wanted to go, you know, but they just could not – you know, push the envelope enough to make it darker. And I think this show just by the two episodes that I've seen could be so much better if they push the boundary on it, if they made it like a, um, uh, what's the other one? Hill house. Yeah. Oh, the Hill house. Yeah. Like think about that horror aspect of it and making it like lock and key like that. Yeah. It's it's like were you disappointed, Mike, that the that the girl and because this is his first episode that the girl in the well wasn't a little creepier than she was. Yeah, it, I definitely she was too like clean. <laughs> yeah, right. That. And uh, I thought she actually looked a little bit better when she cleaned her well cleaned herself up wearing the black dress and everything. Yeah, it looked more like her there than mm -hmm. it did when she came out of the well. Yeah. Yeah, so it, th there are flaws with it, but it's still it's a good show. We're still enjoying it. It's just not quite what we wanted right. as fans. And it is a season one, so maybe yeah. as the show goes on, if it gets renewed, it'll get darker. Uh, last question, we'll go to the other big book, is anyone read Wonder Woman 750? Plus, there's a new Wonder Woman book. Uh, we did read it. Uh, we've discussed it when, that, when it came out, so definitely go check out that show. And then is anyone getting the new Black Label Wonder Woman book? I'm not. I am. I am. Oh no! Wait, I am. I'm gonna try the first issue. It's, it's the the writer of uh, Murder Falcon. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you talked about that. That's yeah. coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, I don't think I added that to our big books. Yeah, <laughs> so. I didn't add it to the issues out. either. I didn't realize it. Yeah. Well, we talked about like, it. I'm now. Curious. Spotlighted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go forward. Now we'll talk about the next one. And uh, next one was a book that actually surprised me. Uh, this was Gwen Stacy issue one. Um, I actually like this book. At first I was really on the fence about actually buying it. And then I was like, you know what? Well, why not? It's Gwen Stacy. You know, people like her. I was like, let's see what this book has to offer. People and, are like, I don't like her. <laughs> yeah, and then like my comic book store threw in the J. Scott Campbell variant for me. Oh, nice. And oh, so nice. I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty it. cool. And that cover is actually really nice. Um, it's like got butterflies all over it and everything. And one of the butterflies has like like Spider-Man's colors on it. And oh. so it, it it's really cool. You know, have you guys seen it at all? I, don't I think, think I've seen that one. No, yeah, there's so many variants for this. Idea. Hold, on, hold oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and the Green really Goblin cool. ones. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like, it's really cool. And it's a little bit different from what he usually does, you know? So um, I liked it. And uh, I was like, that's cool that they threw that in there for me. So, but this book was good. I mean, I liked seeing Gwen work with her father. And being how she like helps with the police work mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And and this book takes place um, 
like during the issues of Spider-Man. Oh, I forgot what it was. Now it says it in the back of the book. Like it was before Ben died, Uncle Ben died. And then Uncle Ben died towards the end of the issue while Gwen was in the hospital with her father and her father woke up. Yeah. Out because Ben. But died. I think this, this series takes place like these issues are taking place between I'm going to pull it up real quick between like Spider-Man's like issue 23 and like issue 30 or something like that. So that's where yeah. this, that's where this story is being told at. I yeah, like, the, I like the back of it too. Like how it has like the Gwengers. Yeah. Wait, show it again, Mike. The, it's the like Avengers. a little short story where he, she's everybody. Yeah. She's yeah. everybody. <laughs> I, um, he, what are you gonna say, Mike? No, that was like, and then she was like a uh, ghost spider too. Yeah. I think for me, because I'm such a big Spider Gwen fan, I didn't love this book and I really want to. Powers. I knew it. No, not even that. I think it's just for me, I think an issue two will be a lot better. I just thought she was very plain. Uh, and I understand, like, that's the point of her character that she's yeah. girl next door or whatever, but there wasn't any defining qualities for me. It's like, all right, she has the perfect boyfriend. Uh, she, you know, uh, is trying to run for president. And I guess it does kind of go to shambles with her dad losing her leg. And I'm curious to see like where that's going to take her, but it felt very like Scooby-Doo mysteries. And mm. I don't know. I, it just wasn't my thing. And I, I'm going to obviously get the next issue because it's Gwen Stacy, but I lost yeah. Mike. Um, yeah. but yeah, yeah but I Mike's wanted having to trouble with the internet tonight. Yeah. I, I mm. liked it. More than I thought it was going to, because I, I thought I was going to feel more like you did, Cat. With mm -hmm. she was, it was just kind of like this, uh, and, and not that there's anything wrong with slice of life stories, because mm -hmm. I do like slice of life. But it, it, I thought that's what it was going to be. It was just going to be a slice of life Gwen Stacy story, and it's like, okay, that's. But when I read it, it's like I, I like the fact that they showcased her intelligence, showcased her deductive skills, and all that kind of stuff that you know we, uh, I, I think, got played down back in the day, but we've learned to appreciate her a lot more over the years. Um, and so I, I, I liked that they played into those aspects of her. And then they, you bring in the green goblin, which was interesting. You bring him in before all that, that went down with, with Spidey and, and her and everything. And I, I thought it was an interesting retcon to, to make. So I don't know. I, I liked it. And I, I love the, the, the scene with Peter in the library, because it's just like foreshadowing of what's to come with those two. It was, it was a nice little, uh, Easter egg, yeah, cameo appearance. Well, we lost Mike. So. <laughs> All right, so let's go on to our number fives. Uh, I will go first. Uh, my number five was Go Go Power Rangers issue number. I'm sure Mike is super happy. He's not here to hear yeah, this. Yeah, he's like, thank number, God. Super uh, number twenty. Well, my internet's going out. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I like that this is starting to bridge the gap between Go Go Power Rangers and Mighty Morphin. The um, uh, Omega Rangers or are, are beginning here. You have uh, Tommy taking over as the leader. Jason still having to step in as a leader because uh, Tommy's not quite there yet. I like that because in the TV series he just became leader. That was that. He was the leader. In this, they actually show the struggle of him becoming the leader now. And then you have Jason, Trini, and Zach who are going off trying to find uh, the final Omega Ranger to join their group. Mike came right at the great time. We're talking about so, Power Rangers. And it, oh, ends us, it ends with us finding the blue Omega Ranger, which we all know everything's going to go to hell with her in Mighty Morphin. So it doesn't look good. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, I like it it you think? Oh, I like it the other way. I don't, I don't yeah, know. No, this plays bad. Well, yeah. Brad's gone. Brad's here again. Brad, um, don't get back. You're gonna hurt yourself. Uh, but yeah, Go Go Power Rangers. I echo everything you said. I, I really, what I love about the series is the interpersonal relationships, and I think they do a good job. But I understand why it's ending because it's kind of getting close to where we are in the other series. So, exactly, it, it makes sense now. So oh, that was my number I five, Mike. Oh, uh, okay. So that was your number five. All right. So I think my number five was x-force issue seven and now we lost cat <laughs> what is it you you have left and right x-force number seven was mine uh number five i really so like good. that book i love i love how this book really focuses on domino and like the struggles that she goes through it's almost like 
it's its own domino book. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and um, right? and it, it's kind of cool how her powers have been wacky, and you kind of realize now it's because of this copycat that that's out there, and and I think that maybe these people, the, these Zeno people, maybe cloned her. Or I, who knows what they did, but it's like she's complete opposite. You know, it's like she's white and black instead of black and white. And uh, but it it's kind of cool because she also has the powers of of um, a domino there with the with the good luck powers. You know, so uh, I thought that was kind of cool. It was a cool twist, and I love how yeah, Domino was- does that investigative work on. How- Sorry. Wait, what is that? Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> and how she's doing the investigative work on just like this person shot from this way and this person, there's no way that this person could have shot this. And uh, I just love seeing that at the end of it, if of who that person was. I was like, damn, that's crazy. So good book. I, I really enjoyed it. I love it. I love how both X books kind of spotlighted an X man or, or a X. Well, Domino was never really an X-Man, so it focused on two specific mutants. You had X-Men, which focused on Mystique, and then you had X-Force that focused on Domino. But Dom, I, I liked X-Force. I loved this issue. It was a lot of – it was great. These, these are the only two X-Men books I feel that are solid each and every time they come out. Yeah. I'm excited. I also – I'm wondering if her and Colossus might have possibly something. Well, they have history. They do have history. I'm wondering yeah. if their history is continuing now. I, I don't know. I yeah, the, the only, know he doesn't have Kitty Pride anymore. Right. Yeah, he has to get over that. So you know, yeah. like she's under the ocean somewhere. But, so <laughs> her body is somewhere. Yeah, yeah. The only problem I had with this issue was some of the art was a little off for me. Like it looked that, like Rob, I didn't read the issue, but from uh, Mike's panel, I'm like, did Rob Liefeld draw that? Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like her arms are like way up here, and uh, uh, the scene with uh, Colossus, like Colossus looked like the Hulk compared to her. He was so yeah. huge, it was just weird. It's there's like there's times where the art is good, and then there's times where the art is just not so good. Right. Give it yeah. to this book. So I agree there. All right, so who else has to go with their number five? Me. Okay, go Mine, ahead. Mine's a book we already talked about, Hawkeye Freefall. Okay. And I also have to go, I believe. You have to go, Kat? Yeah. yeah. And mine was mine was Alfred, so we already talked about it. All right. What about you, Michael? Mine is Bloodshot issue number six. And uh, – I saw this book to be uh, a good issue. Um, it did actually pick up uh, from the last issue where we get a little bit more about uh, Mina's story, about how she uh, is helpful with her powers of uh, a very sick girl, Lucy. And we get a little bit of a backstory about her as well as uh, Dr. Dust, who actually um, is part of the uh, antagonist of the book where she plays like a like you would think she would play like a good guy a good person but she really is not playing as a good person like she actually shows her villainous side in this issue and uh she just wants to destroy Edelon because uh she stole Mina away from her and everything and um there was like a whole full out fight and uh, the artwork was really good by the way and um at the end of the issue, though, we get a little bit of that bloodshot and uh, Elon romantic moment thing going on with each other. So uh, <laughs> that was actually more shocking. And, uh, yeah, it's to be continued. So definitely a good issue. Just want to read more of the issue to see what happens next. We have uh, actually a new uh, person in the comments giving their number five. So that was G3N or Genesis. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Genesis. Genesis, Oh, nice. Cool. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Yeah. We always love seeing new people and our old people too. Yep. We love seeing everyone. Exactly. Uh, And again, if you comment in the chat, you're going to be put into our raffle for the end of the show. So Genesis just was put in our raffle. In the raffle. In the, in the raffle. to win digital comics. You guys, yep. ready for uh, more comics? Yeah. Right. Let's talk about one that I hated. 
Uh-oh. Harley Quinn <laughs> in Poison Ivy. Not that. I didn't no. read that one. I thought it was the Birds of Prey. Yeah, I'm well, sorry, we're yeah, getting there. It is there. the Birds of Prey. I yeah, got oh, is it? Yeah. That one. Don't worry. Yeah. We'll talk about that one. I hate about. I hated Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. I got halfway through it, and um, I said, I'm not going to read this anymore. Look how big this is. I, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> My God, it's the oversized one. It's an yeah. Oversized one. I remember I was talking to, to um, one of the people that work at the store. I'm like, I just don't know where to put this. Like me either. It's like, I don't know what to do. Oh, we actually have a new commenter here. Uh, Radio Matt Gaming. Hey, guys. Want to stop by and say hello. Discovered uh, your show a few weeks back. Keep up the great content. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you, Radio Matt. It's yeah. awesome. But yeah, talking I didn't about like birds of prey. <laughs> I didn't like it either, Mike. I'm gonna try issue two. I made it to the end. I did it, and it was just. My thing is, is it's too like over the top, and like Holly wants to sleep with everyone, doesn't? Yeah, he? and I just feel like so does cable. Why are we shaming Harley? Yeah, but you know, we're ready to get the cover. We're ready to get the cover for him. They're in a relationship. Harley's hitting on Power Harley's, Girl. Harley's trying to get into well, a relationship. Well, she's Harley has history of Power job. Girl. <laughs> What's that? Harley have what? Has history, history with Power Girl. They've done yeah, two much since stuff. I just felt like it was just done, like the way it was written, I just felt like it was too, too much. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like what she was I saying. Agree. It was just too, I don't know. It was just like, okay. Like it reminded me of a Deadpool comic. It was just like it's just too over the top. Well, it's just it feels like it's forced. That's what Harley is is a Deadpool comic. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Harley is DC's Deadpool right now. Yeah. Although I, I hear Sam Hum- like from what I've seen from Sam Humphrey's run, which I'm not surprised at all, it's a lot more emotional. And I think one That's of true. these days I gotta catch up with it because I love his writing. Um, but yeah, going back to Harley, um, I didn't hate it, but I did not love it either. I like the endings. I'm like, oh, the birds of prey are finally here. It's like the movie. They show up for 10 minutes. Uh, so Harley, on the other hand, I didn't love. And this kind of goes back to like the point. We'll talk about this with Harley and Poison Ivy's uh, relationship and how undefined that is. It's just like, yeah, it's they going out or are they not going out? I would like to know. Yeah, I would like them just to go out at this point because in this book and in Harley Quinn and uh, Poison Ivy issue six, it's like, are they? Aren't they? Why can't they confirm it? Like, they are Is going it, out. Are they that scared to make Harley, you know, be in this type of relationship outside of the Joker? Come but on. she's been in it. That She's been yeah. in this relationship, and that's what makes no sense. It's like exactly. she's in the relationship, but they, don't, they just don't talk about it. It's so yeah. weird. And just like Poison Ivy kind of leaves after they wind up getting off to this island. She's like, yeah, we need a break. I need so a break I, from you, yeah. I don't know if they get back together by the end of this issue or they meet with each other. They don't. At the end of this issue. They, they don't. don't. It's just, no, oh, okay. that's, yeah. She's on so, the break. Right it's just, this, moment. this reminded me too much of the Harley Quinn, the, the series, the, the main series from – you know, from DC. And I was just say, I remembered I didn't like that and had too much of the whole, uh, what is it? The Harley gang or whatever it was. Yeah. And, and they were in about her. Yeah. The gang of Harleys. I, I just didn't like it. I just, it wasn't my thing then. I thought this was going to be something completely different. Um, like I get that Amanda, Amanda Connor wrote it and, and uh, Jimmy Paul And I don't know if I ever say his name right, but but I thought maybe it would be something a little bit different, and it kind of wasn't. It was kind of like the same thing that we've read before. So uh, that's just why I just like I, I don't like it. It's just not my thing. It's not not what I'm into. And I and I, I think like it's a shame the that more. I oh, did like yeah. that one way more. Well, we'll definitely talk about that. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I also have thoughts on it. But yeah, and as a, like a Birds of Prey fan, like it's a shame, right? Because this is not Birds of Prey by any means either, mm-hmm. and is not what well we neither was the movie so it makes sense yeah they're definitely going more for the movie <laughs> serenity goes uh he goes he thought um harley quinn what does it say oh Above, oh I here it lost is. it there it is i got it go. harley quinn and the birds of prey is my number three loved it so much harley Harley back in the hands of her proper writers. And then he said, well, it's the same writer. So of course it'd be the same thing. Uh, well, right now it. they're not writing it anymore. So right. again, Sam Humphreys is doing the current one. So they've been off it for a little while. I just thought when you see the birds of prey, like you would 
get something else out of it. You know, mm -hmm. so I agree. Yeah, 100%. I agree. You know, just because you get the same writers doesn't mean you have to write it the same exact way. You can have Harley maybe similar, but you know, I don't know. Oh yeah. So, but that's just me though. Like I said, if you enjoyed it, hey, that's great. All right, so let's move on. Let's talk about the next one. Uh, so we talked. We talked about Go Go Power Rangers, right? We did already. Yeah. Okay, so that was the one we talked about. So uh, we're Ooh. gonna go on. And Hey, all came to this show from Comic Book Corner 2.0. Keep up the great work. I enjoy the various viewpoints from everyone. Nice to have new insight on these books from Sean Brown. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We yeah. appreciate oh, nice. that. Or Shane. Yeah. Shane or Sean? Sean. 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 I was right the first time. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. Sean. Thank you. All right. So uh, my number four is actually Venom issue 23. Um, it's I like been a while the, since that's been your top. Yeah, well, it's because it's been on this whole Venom Island nonsense, and it hasn't been really as strong. Uh, but this one was kind of cool because you get to see Eddie Brock trying to survive. He wound up cutting off his hand, and he mm -hmm. had to cauterize it, and he's trying to get help, and the, the symbiote's chasing after him, and then he goes and he reaches this um, this tower and it electrifies the two symbiotes that are joined together, which is the carnage and the, in the venom symbiote. And they wind up splitting apart and venom or Eddie Brock falls to the floor. Captain America winds up rescuing him because he gets that signal out and guess what they wind up doing? Nuking the whole entire freaking Island where the carnage symbiotes out and the venom symbiote is up. And you're kind of like, Oh shit. <laughs> so how is the, how are those symbiotes still alive? Because Eddie was not attached to either symbiote. So it was kind of neat. And then we got to see a little bit more of Dylan on how he's handling the little piece of mm -hmm. symbiote that he has. That's from that um, symbiotic dragon or whatnot from Null. So that, that was quite interesting there. So it, it was a good story, but really what made it was, the end of it because you're not sure how those symbiotes actually live. So that was kind of cool. I liked it. So real good. And Mark Bagley's artwork continues to be really nice on that book as well. All right. No, so we got Tevi as number four on there. X -Men I like that he, he only liked one part is the one panel. <laughs> that was like a very such a small part of the book, but I'm right. glad you liked it. I'm sure we're gonna talk about it. All right, and then so Chris, so I'll move on to your number four. Pennyworth, Batman, uh, Alfred, uh, Batman, Pennyworth, R.I.P. The one shot surprised me. We All already right. talked about it. And Cat, mine was uh, alienated issue one. Um, I know this is also my chopping block, which we'll discuss, but uh, it also was kind of a lower week for me this week, but. I like that it was unique in the way that they, so there's three main characters, like three teenagers, and they're all sharing like a hive mind. They, they all read each other's thoughts because of this alien. And I like the unique look of that, um, how they did the text and the narration for it. But I don't know if the characters themselves have hooked me enough to read another issue, sadly. But I think the look and the cre creativeness uh, is what brought it to my top five. Yeah, I... I'm still here, by the way. Um, <laughs> I just had to go off camera for a minute. Um, yeah, I read this too, and I, I think I felt kind of the same way. I enjoyed it. What are you doing to me, Chris? I didn't um, know you something else. Okay. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, but yeah, I, I wasn't, I don't know that I'm invested enough to continue on with it either. Uh, but I did like the concept, and I, I like the, the, the joint mind. Uh, thing as well and th what they did to that kid i thought that was really interesting it's like oh man that but was it interesting enough exactly probably right. not. I get, it'll Honor depend on the week yeah yeah exactly it will definitely depend on the week for me for when that comes out all right and so what do we got uh michael uh, yes mine was uh rye issue number four which is another valiant uh comic book actually and uh, it talks about how there's like a threat that's coming about. And we have more about the Red King, who is the blood father that arises. And he wants to take the world under his system rule. 
And we we learned about this with the uh, you know the new father in J in uh, New Japan and all that stuff that Ride talks about in this issue. And the only way that the red the blood father will get his powers of you know destroying the world is uh, if he gets uh, if he destroys the offsprings and um, gather them. So because they were at Hope Springs actually. So. Uh, we have a uh, Galad, uh, the Eternal Warrior. I think that's how you say his name, who actually appears in this issue, and um, he's there to try to guide Rai, like telling him that you know you're not welcome here. So there's like a whole big thing that's going on with that, and they're only there to get rid of the offspring that Rajin can only. Uh, get rid of with his uh, powers that he has and we kind of see Rai on the bad side that I think he's using uh, Rajin to get these offsprings because that's what it seems to be and he treats him very harshly in this issue so uh, as he tries to destroy the machines uh, we have a battle between Galad and Rai and they have the Red King's reinforcements who come in to get the offspring for the Red King as that invasion happened. And that's to be continued. Uh, interesting issue, definitely. And that's it. That's it? Yep. All right. Are you who sure about how she missed? Who? What's that? No. no, I'm asking Michael. Oh. Uh, no, that's it. Funny. Anybody had, who else hasn't gone for their number four? I think we, we all, all went. went. Yeah. We all went. Also, welcome to the th 34 people watching. That is amazing. And oh, once oh. again, comment if you want to get 12 free digital comics, um, Marvel comics. So if you comment, we'll we'll put you on the, the list for the end. All right. So let's see. What are we talking about now? We're moving on to Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. This is the finale of this, right? Yeah, it's the last yeah. issue. So what would you guys think of way that? Way opposite. Way opposite. Uh, it, the complete opposite is Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey issue number one. I love this miniseries. I love the twist in the end that the Poison Ivy that Harley's been running around with is only a piece of Harley uh, of Poison Ivy. It's not the original. The original's all jealous. It becomes this humongous fight. And the only unfortunate person that loses in this is Harley. They are... Broke up again. Again, maybe. Did I don't they even know. date? Are they together? Did they, were yeah. they dating? I mean, she was dating a piece of poison ivy, and and I love how the piece is like she'll come find you later. Just 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 run away now. Go, go, go yeah. We'll see you again. Uh, yeah, I um I didn't like this issue. I think because I've been following this train, I was just like, it's I don't not, know I don't the think point. It's a series. I don't think it's a series. I think it's DC not committing. To... I don't even know what this book's about. That's the biggest issue. Is like. If you ask me what the theme of this book was, I have no freaking clue. Harley I don't know. trying to get closer to Poison Ivy. And unfortunately... But then the ending is crazy. that she has two people. Like, I don't know. I thought it jumped the shark for me. Yeah, it was okay. It was better than Birds of Prey number one. See, I like Birds of Prey more than I liked Harley and Poison Ivy. Oh. Um, like, at least I understood what it was going for. Like, it might not have been for me, but I understand people would like it. This, I don't know what they were trying to target. I don't know. We do have a question here from Tevia, and I think we're going to disagree oh, with no. it. Yeah. Do you think Teen Titans Comics needs another reboot? Hell nope. no, because it's been the best nope. it's been in a really long yeah. time. Why do you think it's, it's, still, it's, you think it's still going on and it hasn't been canceled? Right. It's, it's really well written book. It really is. Like, man, if more DC books were written that way, it it would be a beautiful thing. Agreed. It's not messed up, man. It's just, you know, you want you want her back where, you know, you're comfortable. I mean, that's where Harley's been for so many years. It's it's, uh, it's something different. I like that they're exploring Harley away from Joker. And, and Harley's not exactly the Harley Quinn she was when they first introduced her. She's not exactly a bad guy anymore. She's more of like that anti-hero slash nut. Breaker. Well, well, I think the biggest issue why they moved her away is because it was an extremely abusive relationship. So yeah, I think so. so. I, I particularly would not want to read that. So, and I think uh, honestly, media has done a really good job at showcasing her getting away from that. So I think better than the comics, the 
the movie yeah. and the TV show did a really good job. But you know that. what's weird though? Okay, so what's weird about Harley is you get her in, uh, and I hate using Heroes in Crisis, but you get her in Heroes in Crisis, mm -hmm. look how she was there. And you get her here in her regular book or the Poison Ivy book or whatever it is. And it's like you get her there. Which is she? You know what I'm saying? Is she yeah, they flip -flop that her. character or is she the other character? And Google are serious, honestly. Right. Like, so it's like when you – it's like Deadpool, for instance. Deadpool, he's always goofy no matter what book he's in. Very you know good. what I'm saying? So if you're going to make her silly and goofy, you got to make her silly and goofy in every book. Not in Heroes in Crisis, all of a sudden make her this badass looking character. And Look, her in detective. Look how uh -huh. she's doing in Detective right now. I'm not reading Detective, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, I think you're oh, the only one reading. Wait, was it Detective? He's in Batman. Batman, it was Batman. He's in, she only had the cliffhanger in Batman. I know, but looks like she's taking a more serious role in this one. Oh, uh, yeah, I think she will. And I like, honestly, like the best Harley ever written is in Justice. Uh, God's Among Us Harley. I think it's the perfect mm -hmm. balance of humor and seriousness. So that's the Harley I would like to see. Right. Um, we do have a couple of comments here. Do you all think the new character punchline will hold? Um, Maybe. It's hard to tell, so we don't know anything about her. Access right. uh, when Hell Hell Arisen comes out, or when she like officially and appears. In Batman. A, and when everybody gets a chance to read Batman coming out tomorrow and Hell yeah, but Arisen. she's not gonna be in it much, so it's, it's gonna be hard. Sold out. It was ridiculous. It went on sale at Midtown, and it was gone in less than two minutes. Well, on eBay, it's going for like thirty five dollars before of it course. even came out, and I think of that's course. crap. It's such no, crap. that's the sharks. They they've done it with toys. They've done it with Nintendo Amiibos, and now they're doing it with comics. It makes perfect sense. Anything that's a physical medium that has a limited print run or a limited run period, it's going to happen. That's why Marvel Legends suffered for a long time until they started making more than one wave of the same wave, and why Amiibos suffer the same problem, but you know, at least we have the Japanese ones we could buy. Video game, collector's edition, same thing. If you can get it, if it's limited edition, you're going to lose it. The Animal Crossing Switch didn't even make it onto pre-order shelves, and it was already sold out. How well, did we I mean, get to Animal Crossing? Yeah, right? I'm just talking about limited edition. He loves when Animal it, Crossing. When it goes to to punchline, it, it it'll all we'll all find out how that turns out once we know the character. For yeah. all as we know, is that book could totally go down in price again because the character sucks or she's only in a couple of issues or whatever the case may be, you know, yeah. everyone's speculating that she is the next Harley Quinn, the next girl at Joker's side, but mm -hmm. that could totally be false. And we could be totally wrong about and that. And somebody just wasted $30 on that eBay book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not yeah. doing that, but thank you black Knight for being yes. here. Thank you for the continuing to watch us for another, another six. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about the next one. So we were talking about um, some Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man issue thirty-nine. So we get the continuation of the Jay Jonas state, uh, story as they get to do a podcast with each other on the air, um, which I thought was actually really a lot of fun. You get to see that. Um, yes, they they may have kind of made up but they obviously still have issues with each other it's really deep rooted in there and i thought that was kind of cool how everything was bubbling up and then at the same time you wind up getting to see this um this plot take place with the foreigner and chance and this this bet going on that chance get has to steal one of of Spider-Man's web shooters. And uh, it, that made for quite a fun clipping or so. Again, I enjoyed this story, story and Nora Winters is in there going, oh, this is going to be good. She's like, I can't wait until yeah. things heat up. I would kill for them to get the voice actors from the 90s Spider-Man cartoon huh. to voice over that oh, podcast. Maybe at a comic con. Yeah. yeah. You could definitely see awesome. that happening. Yeah. This I mean, book was... Oh, you go, Michael. You go. No, no, go ahead, Kat. No, go ahead. Go I'll ahead. go quick. Um, I had so much fun with this book. I think Nick Spencer just gets how to write 
today's internet culture without mm-hmm. making it sound preachy or like yeah. un- unorganic. It just feels real. It's like if you've ever listened to a podcast, especially like something that's not like our podcast, like a, you know, more, more of a legit podcast, but uh, like it's all the, hey, are we, hey, we got sponsors? Brand. We got <laughs> I didn't sponsors. say anything. That doesn't mean we're not legit. It just means we're not successful. <laughs> <laughs> this is brought to my deep okay, They're our sponsor. They know we're sponsor. Oh, shoot. Which one? In the comments, vote which one was worse. Me saying this is not legit or Grant saying this is not successful. We're getting That's successful. We have we're a G Fuel cup. Does that mean we're sponsored? Yes, we are a sponsor. We just got sure. money from G Fuel. There you go. But anyways, no, <laughs> Uh, a, a podcast that has sponsors yes. and after they get the money from them. So right. if you listen to those type of podcasts, uh, it was kind of nice that they kind of poked fun at it. And I mean, going into the root of why this really was a great issue is the J. Jonah Jameson and um, Spider-Man dynamic. And also how you could see the other side. It wasn't just about Spider-Man, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's cool to see that. That's what I love because he's like, it wasn't all untrue. And it's like, what are you talking about? And then you see this whole flashback of all this stuff that where he's threatened them and all this different things that he's done. And it's, yeah, that's that's right. We are. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a great issue. I like the whole back and forth thing of uh, yeah. Spider-Man and Jonah. And then there was just like getting all gray. And then all of a sudden things get all like heated up. And then uh, everything just goes by like saying, well, you did this, but you said I was a menace. And then the whole thing of, oh, I was laughing like throughout every page that I kept reading with J. Jonah and Spider-Man going at each other. And um, But the only way Chance found Spider-Man was when Foreigner gave him the coordinates to actually find him, which he actually did in the last uh, page of the issue as he breaks in and that's to be continued. So I, yeah, I'm, no, I'm really getting hooked on the amazing Spider-Man series. It's getting really awesome. I didn't know there were Spider-Man PS4. Yeah, and James on the radio. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that either. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, that's funny. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. I haven't actually played the game. So, um, <laughs> It's over there. I, I, you have the PlayStation. There's I know. Be no excuse. I, you know, Play. I will um, soon. But the only thing I didn't like was the uh, the sin eater little thing at the at the very end. Yeah, I mean, I they're always punching it. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Um, I did not give my number four, by the way, because uh, oh. it was off screen. Uh, but it's a book where I talked about Spider Man Black Cat Strikes. So nice. Sweet. All right, so now we're moving on to our number three and my number three. I don't know. Somehow I got my books mixed up. I don't even know. (laughs) It's like I I thought my number five was Gwen Stacy, right? That's Mm -hmm. what I said. And then my number four is X-Force, but I felt like I talked about X-Force. I did did. talk. We did talk about So number three. Right, but then I talked about Venom Island, and that's technically my number three. What are we oh. talking to? I don't know how that happened, but you That's did weird. talk about all that stuff. Well, how did we talk about X Force when that was? I don't know. Maybe but you got it mixed two, up. Yeah. You know, we talked number... about Gwen Stacy, and then maybe you got it mixed up because we talked about oh, oh, Gwen yeah. Stacy. Yeah, Gwen Stacy was the book we talked about, and that was my number five. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you and just jumped ahead. Yeah. X Force number three is Venom Island. And uh, now we'll move on to Brant with his. My number three is X-Men. Um, I love the stuff with Mystique. Uh, yeah. it, it's been building up since the beginning. We knew that she wanted Destiny back, and we knew that uh, Charles was holding that back, that promise back. But I, I love seeing the flashbacks here as we see these conversations with Destiny and the conversations where she's trying to get her wife back, which I thought was uh, it's just it was so powerful it's like i have to have her back you promised me destiny back and charles is like holding her back because she can tell the future and then you end up with that line of if they don't give me back burn the whole place down it's like oh okay crap <laughs> <laughs> it's just like and mystique is the one that would do that too so it's just i i thought it was really powerful just that whole sequence the whole issue with her um, and I, I want to see where it goes with her from her perspective, how, because 
her being there and in this whole dynamic is kind of shaky to begin with, right? Because her history is so spotted with the X Men. So, I think um, I like the Mystique stuff a lot. I'm not a hardcore Mystique fan, so I don't know if I had that much of a connection in that regard, mm. but I like where this is going. I'm yeah. really excited for the tension. Mm -hmm. um, also, this is actually the first confirmation I think we've had that Mystique's queer. So that was right. cool. Um, it was always I, I kind of. I'm sorry. Lingering. No, you yeah. go. No, it just bouncing right off that. It was always kind of like they were very close, but they never kind of actually said it. It's kind of like Harley and Poison Ivy. Um, it's It was that kind of thing. But yeah, I think that was the first confirmation. Yeah, so that was really cool. But like even just like sidestepping that, um, just her emotion about that was interesting. I don't really yeah. I don't really have a connection in that relationship. So I think that's why I did make my, my top five. I know for people that really love those characters, that must have been like if Kitty Pryde was, you know, came out as bisexual. I'm like, oh that'd be awesome. Because yeah. I've you know I've been waiting for that. I'm sure for Mystique a lot of people would want that too. It was a huge thing I, I wanted to say extreme X Men. Um there was this whole arc where uh, oh, I didn't that. yeah I I love that 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 story. It's Storm and uh uh, a group of X-Men kind of went on this journey to find Destiny's journals or something like that. Um, and so that was a heavy part of that story. And obviously it's a, you know, she's a important character in Rogue's uh, past as well. So um, yeah, I, I guess I had more of a connection because I, I read a lot of that X-Men era. So. All right. So uh, what was yours, Kat? Your number three. Mine was a uh, Hawkeye. We already talked about it. Okay. Okay. Man. Chris? Amazing Spider-Man. We just finished that. Awesome. Michael? Mine was Robin Hood Vigilante issue number four. And uh, I was really glad to see Robin Hood um, back in the Xenoscope uh, comic book. And what it just really talks about, just to sum it up really short, is it focuses more on Greenwich when uh, Lizette talks to her about trying to Tell her that, oh, Robin Hood is a murderer and this and that, and you're running for this, and you're not bringing her to justice, and it looks very bad on you that if you don't bring her in, you know, that, um, you know, you're just holding back all this stuff to bring her to justice, and they both actually made a deal on that, whereas Robin Hood is fighting off against the policemen and the robots, because the robots get a little bit too out of control, and that want to execute Robin Hood, where the police aren't too crazy about that. So the robots take over the policemen, and they go underground. Both Robin Hood and this Met guy who could turn to this giant monster, whatever. Um, and as they go underground, they meet up with a certain group that we saw issues back, and they're looking for a fight. And it left off at a very interesting cliffhanger to be continued very good issue i love reading that robin hood every it's issue. very good it's very good very good <laughs> how many issues is that 12 it's well it's the fourth issue but i believe the bot you mean volume wise or no, 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 no. how many issues is this series oh i think it's uh five or six I oh, okay. I think the next issue sure. Let's look it up. robin hood what's it called a Robin Hood Vigilante, V I G I L A N T E. I think she knows how to spell vigilante. <laughs> well, I was just helping her. Thank you. God. <laughs> Cover A, let's see. Because if it's on um, in class for today, I don't know. It doesn't <laughs> say Wait, Michael's throwing random words. Hold on. I could look on the comic. Oh, Brad's and... gone again. Oh, I'm on the comic. Right. It's spelling. Yeah. It's six issues. Six no. oh, and it was the issues. last it was the last Robin Hood that was twelve issues. I know yeah, right. so there's two more issues left until we end it. <laughs> Barry Allen says Zenoscope's got some pretty ladies. They do I, I wonder if, yeah, they do. If, if that's what they their do. whole company is about. Was it the covers? Is that how they became popular? No, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. They it became a little, a little they got some eye candy on there. Yeah, I don't think that was it. No. no. The stories, they were very deep. The story, it's all about the stories. Eyes up here. Actually, Robin Hood was the story that kicked it off for me when it came to Zen. And, and Godstorm. Did Pat launch that? Pat yeah. Godstorm okay. and Robin yeah. Hood. 
Patrick he Shan did, did the, the Robin Hood story, and that it was it was so phenomenal. Then it, he kind of changed the scope of Zenoscope. You and know, he, yeah. oh, no pun intended. I didn't even mean to do. It's that. a shame it kind of like went back to what it was since yeah. he left. You know. Yeah. But. Now they got this like Beauty and the Beast one, or the, it's called Bell. Bell, or yeah, Bell like yeah. 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 So, I thought he his his stories were very. It was it's all very, about hot chicks fighting some kind of demon creature. It's pretty much like yeah. It, there's never a deeper story than that. I really loved his grim fairy tales. I thought you did that such was my a good favorite. job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you did a good job with that. All right. So did everyone do their number three then? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think so. Unless right. Brent did his right. Yes, for his was the X Men. We have a customer oh, right. at my shop that pulls and buys every Zenoscope book and every variant they release. I believe wow. it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, no, it has its fan base for sure. And we, you know, know, we we enjoyed Zenoscope. I mean, Michael enjoyed oh, yeah. Zenoscope, and we enjoyed it for a long time. We just kind of fell off after Pat left. Yeah, and yeah. there's really not that many uh, Zenoscope books each week. I think there's a maximum of like four, and then if you count like variants, like let's say there's two or three of each. That's There's a, a lot of variants. It's, it's tell you the truth, my sh comic shop doesn't even carry Zenoscope books anymore. Oh, no. I have special really? order. Every yeah, single they're time. Yeah, yeah, they're special order. Yeah, it's like you gotta if you order them for your pull list, that's one thing. But they'll yeah. be they don't cover them. They don't. They don't my um my comic shop way back when I when I was uh, when I had a comic shop around here, they ne I never even knew Zenoscope existed. He only did it for special orders. I remember seeing a cover once, and that was it. Yeah, I literally was doing only one buying it at the shop and that's it. So I, <laughs> now no one's buying it, I guess. I don't know. All right. So we're going to skip to just go right to number two because we talked about alienated already. Yep. So uh, my number two book is actually two books and it's, it's that black cat story that we already talked about the Spider-Man uh, black cat strikes issues one and two. Cause I read them back. Nice. So I really enjoyed it. Like I said, overall artwork was phenomenal. Black Cat was was great. I loved Peter. I loved the way he was drawn. Like everything about it was really well done. So uh, thank you guys for recommending that to me. And uh, I can't wait to, to read the next issue when that one comes out. So uh, Michael, we'll go on to you now for your uh, number two. Uh, book we already talked about, Amazing Spider-Man issue 39. All right. And Chris? Uh, we talked about already the dollhouse. The dollhouse. Don't get uh -huh. that dollhouse, man, because you'll be sucked in. <laughs> and don't make <laughs> wishes with the black room. <laughs> All right, cat. Mine was Power Rangers. We already talked about it. Brant. Mine's a book we haven't talked about yet. Uh, Thor. Oh, you broke the chain. Oh, oh, no, you broke it. Okay, you broke it. Oh, sorry. Okay. Jeez, Thor. man. I, I'm really liking the store series. I, I oh just, my god, with Beta Ray Bill, that's this yeah, issue, right? Yeah, the Beta Ray Bill battle. Whoa. It was just, one, just say, out of my top. What's that? Just fell out of my top. I read that in oh. court today for the show. Yeah, that was such a good exchange, a, a good battle between them. Like Beta Ray is so mad at Thor that he mm -hmm. that he willingly takes the, the power cosmic. It's like at first he he thinks he's just trying to save him, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, wait a minute, you did this on purpose? Yeah, yeah, we we got a problem, dude. And then, man, he breaks Stormbreaker. Thor breaks Stormbreaker. It's like, oh man, poor Beta Ray. He, he had to do it to get his hammer back. But did did I you know. think like he was gonna get his arm ripped off? I thought I something. I thought it was gonna happen. Yeah, I thought that's what was gonna happen too. And it's like, he oh man, don't so do many that. Stuff, though he, he lost an eye. He's gonna get his arm ripped off now too. Oh, no, you mean Beta Ray? Bill? Beta Ray Bill, Bill. yeah, because oh, he was. Or he needs to lose some stuff then. <laughs> Beta Ray was holding Mjolnir, and Thor was trying to get it back, like he was trying to, you know, telepathically or whatever, magically get it back, and he wouldn't let go of it. So his, his arm was, yeah. So. And that's why he shattered Stormbreaker. Yeah, yeah. So it was just, and now at to end it, he beats Beta Ray Bill, but now Sif has come down. She's like, I've had enough of this, <laughs> and it's yeah. like, okay. Yeah. Now he's gonna battle Sif, and it's just it, every issue. It's just it stacks on the on the next one. It gets better and better. So, right, yeah. and and I love the opening page. And this was my top five panels. Actually, that opening page it shows you what it's like to be Thor. He's yeah. been alive so long that decades seem like an hour to him. You know, 
Uh, it, it's just like it, it. It's just like he doesn't even remember certain battles. There, there'll be epic battles that happen, and it's just like a minute of his life, and it yeah. doesn't even really mean anything. And you know what? Like, I don't think anyone's ever really explained that before um, mm. on on what Thor's life actually could is like. You know, yeah. and I never thought of it that way either. It's yeah. I, I love that. It, it's it's reminiscent of uh, the way Peter David explained the way Quicksilver's mind works with the speed, like everybody is going in slow motion around him. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of similar in that way. Uh, so yeah, I don't think, yeah, that's that was a really powerful scene. And then like um, where he was uh, battling Galactus, like Galactus was like, no, you're not going to throw off my power. I gave that to you. And he's like, no, I took it. It's like, no, you, you can't control me. Uh, yeah, just so good. Such good dialogue in this book, too. We have a new viewer, Ron P. Says Thor sounds like it's a great comic. So it is. That's awesome. Welcome. It is. And you are in the running to get those uh, free digital comics. Uh, and then also, this is a question for you guys. So is Thor holding back or is he just not strong enough to pull the hammer back? I think he's losing his uh, worthiness again. Because yeah. He's working with the Galactus. Yeah, they, they've referenced it that like the hammer is getting heavier and heavier every time. So, and even Beta Ray tells him he's not worthy. Uh, obviously, he still is, but it's something about uh, since he became the All Father uh, of Asgard, it's slowly his worthiness has been fading. So, we don't, we, yeah, it's heading somewhere. We just don't know. Exactly. Yeah. We lost Mike. So, that's all right. So, continuing on, we already talked about X Men. So, let's go to Hellmount. Uh, Hell are we still on Hellmount? Hell 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 right. So, that's you and that's Cat and Brand all the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I like that the that they used the supporting characters in the Hellmouth. I thought that should have been this whole entire series because instead of doing all these tie ins and whatever they are trying to do, but yeah. I, I still don't love this event, but I thought at least the battle was cool. Yeah, this was probably the best issue of this series, I think, yeah. so far. And I that's agree. it's still not, like you said, it, it's not the greatest. I, I think, like, the last issue of Buffy picked up, and that led straight into this, and that made this pick up. So it was, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I just, I wish it was better. <laughs> and I agree that they shouldn't have separated them out like that. I think they should have kept them together at least some of them together uh and just i don't know it could have been a stronger event but this issue was solid because you but also there's questions there. in the end though like why did willow leave and then like yeah. is she a slayer like what happened in the end was that willow or is that that new slayer i was so confused yeah i i think i mean willow left yeah um which then was, who was that girl at the end i don't know <laughs> right it was confusing yeah it was a little confusing. Yeah, yeah, the art's not as good as it could be either. Um, yeah, and I don't know. Like they left the thing with Xander open, so it's like, what what's going to happen there? Um, yeah, we don't. We still don't know if like are there three Slayers now? Are there what's going? On? It's yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, already, and we're not even like up to issue ten. Like, what are we up to on Buffy right now? I think it was twelve. I think the last twelve. Issue was 12. We're yeah. just like under a year, and yeah. this is how much craziness is going on. Yeah. Oh. So we're on That's our number ones. So you know number ones now, right? Number one. Mm -hmm. Now we're right. Number one. My number one was Thor. Hmm. Brant, you're number one. Uh, Amazing Spider Man. Cat, you're number one. I was also Amazing Spider Man. Chris, you're number one. X Force. Michael, break the chain. You're going to break the chain. Sonic the Hedgehog. God. Ah, and we talked about that. Yep. Uh, uh, Tevia, Tevia did ask because this was a big book, so I guess we could only Brant. Oh man, we lost. <laughs> uh, but Tevia asked, "Did you guys read Superman Heroes?" So only Brant wants to discuss it. So, I yeah, I did read it. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. Um, I was hoping that it would be as good as uh, what was it, issue 19 of Superman that had the like most of the book was really good until the Mongol stuff. Um, that's where this was supposed to continue, and it did, but it just it wasn't as impactful i think we got all the heaviest emotional moments in that superman issue so this was just like okay it's there it was another i i would have if i had to choose between pennyworth and this i would have chose pennyworth yeah what book superman uh, heroes. heroes just because tevi asked about it oh uh, okay gotcha 
All so right. we're up to chopping block. Yes, Chris, it's time I for you your, to do your favorite scene. Let's chop. And as most of you have heard already, I'm chopping Harley Quinn and the birds of prey. Cat, what are you chopping this week? Are you chopping? Um, I uh, Harley Quinn and birds of prey is half chop for me. It depends on what the week will be when it comes out for issue two. And then uh, number uh, also alienated. I'm most likely going to chop when that comes out. Thank you, Dr. Who at 50 and beyond? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Nice. Thank you. Okay, Brad, are you chopping anything this week? I'm chopping so many things. Um, <laughs> He's chopping so many things, but I mean, he has a big list. So, yeah. was that this week that you had that huge list? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, next week. Next week, I have a big list of oh, books. Man. So, um, I have 14 next week, and that's like big these days. Yeah. Net, like tomorrow's, it, it's like I had 30 potential books for tomorrow. Okay. So. Oh my God. All right. So, Alienated is a half chop, just like mm -hmm. you. Um, depends on the week. Uh, Another half chop is Excalibur. I I thought this might happen after that first arc, which I did like. This issue started in New York, and I didn't like it. Uh, so I'm going to give it one more issue, and that's if I don't like the next issue, it's it's gone. Um, Rising Sun. I really liked the first issue, but for some reason, the second issue, I just found myself bored, and I just it's it's a title that it was like okay, I was giving it a shot, and now it's like. Eh. Yeah, I just don't know if it's going to hold my interest when I've got so many other things to read. Uh, Wonder Woman is the last one. Um, I, I tried one more issue of this, and it felt like it was all over the place. Um, issue 750 made sense that it was all over the place because you had all those stories, but this one was supposed to be one continuous story, and it still felt like they were going off in 10 different directions, and it just lost me completely. Sorry, Sweet. I know you like Wonder Woman, but uh, yeah, I'm done. And this is such a lie. I've got to call it out. You are not. You're lying. You'll read issue number 21. We'll see, we'll see you in two weeks. My, I did drop out. I didn't even get issue 20. I no, mean, I, after after that copy. reveal issue, I yeah. didn't pick up anymore. I just picked up that issue I 18. I warned all of you. I warned all of you. And you're like, no, yeah. give it a shot. And then, see? I dropped it after the after 19, I think it was. See? Mike, you chopping anything? Uh, It was the... The Birds of Prey book. I'm I'm chopping that whole sucker. Okay, so Michael, no chop, no chop, no chop, no chop. No chop. So we go into chop suey and key issue. Key issues. All right, so we got a lot of books to talk about with this. So I'm gonna try to go through them kind of quick. Uh, we'll start with Michael with a uh, Bloodshot number zero. Yeah, when I heard that Bloodshot Shizu was coming out this week, uh, I don't know if it's going to be the uh, prelude of going into a new story or if it's just going to be a regular issue that's going to go into many different stories. So I don't know how or what this is going to play out, but I'm going to definitely check it out to see what um, it is because it's it's just weird how we just had bloodshot this week and now we're getting another bloodshot. Yeah, from what I know, but I'll definitely look into it though and see what it's about. I want to clarify because this person asked. One person gave Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey a bad review, and one gave it a good review. So, are we calling it bad or not? Each of us, all five of us, have different opinions on many comics. Just because two of us hate it and maybe one of us love it. Uh, really, it there's no ties. We're not, you know, it, we right. all have our own opinions. We all like different books. We all read different books. So honestly, Harley Quinn, The Birds of Prey, while most of us are chopping it, I mean, one of us is still going to be reading it. So and I it doesn't mean, mean that you shouldn't try it either. Right. Exactly. We're sharing our thoughts, not what you – we we will never tell you what you should and shouldn't buy. Don't buy Superman. Um, <laughs> but we will um, – <laughs> Superman, I guess. But, but also – Oh, we're gonna take ours. No, I'm just saying, but we will share our opinions and then you make your decision off of our opinions and things we talk about and then go check the book out yourself. Yeah, from what you like. You know, you might be like, oh, this person really hates Mystique or whatever. And it's like, well, I know I'm not going to read that because I don't like Mystique. And it's like, well, you know, Brant might really like Mystique. Uh, so it's just like, it's everyone. We just try to give our opinions on it and you could you could kind of figure out your own opinions through that. But yeah, it's not a contest by any means on that regard. Yeah. And we always respect our opinions as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we don't really come to a consensus uh, on a book. It's like, okay, this one, unless we just all are How reading it. It's, it's rare that we all five are reading 
every yeah, you know, literally every only one. Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man's basically it. So um, I was just gonna say with Bloodshot, real quick, Michael. Um, I read the description and it seemed like it's it's supposed to reveal what this mission is all about, really. Um, that's whatever's going on in the main series. So, so uh, then it's a prelude to um, before the mission. I uh, I already yeah. could tell what the issue is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Um, Aquaman 57, Mike and I are curious about this because of Aqua Baby. Aqua Baby's being born, baby. I, think I bought this issue for the same reason I wanted Batman was if this is the first issue with Aquaman's baby, I wanted to have like a first. Mm. Yeah, it's a first appearance of this. Yeah. So then what's the point of this baby being born? There's got to be a reason behind Aquaman's it. Aquaman's going to lose his hand again to protect it, just like in the animated series. <laughs> <laughs> just in the animated series that happened in the comic too oh i know but i'm saying that this is a reason for aquaman to lose his hand again maybe this character eventually will take over you know as king in the future maybe you know? yeah it, it could be a threat to orm uh-oh oh yeah so this might be the only that. issue of aquaman i buy but maybe. just curious to see what happens well yeah. it's in our big books next week and we know two people Probably yeah. will be reading it, so it yeah. means we'll probably talk about it next week. I'm speculating on Aqua Baby. <laughs> that's All right, what our uh, title will be. Yeah, that, that's gonna be that's totally gonna be our title. Uh, let's see, Cat, a book that you are definitely looking forward to, and me as well as Runaways number thirty. Hell to the yeah! That's the um, on. You yeah. know what, Chris? Get out. <laughs> it's it's going already on it's already number video. one. It's already number one. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we'll have to see. It already. might be. This arc has been so freaking good. Um, I want to know what's going on with that, you know, the Doc Justice and and there's a lot of tension with Gert. It's been really, really good. I, it yeah. also this arc has been long, but it doesn't feel long, and that's something I really like. Yeah, it's interesting that way. It is very uh drawn out, um, but it, it you're right, it doesn't feel like oh my this has been going on for 10 years, kind of thing. Because there's um, new information every yeah. issue. Yeah, it's structured really well. Um, yeah. I'm really curious to see what goes down with with uh, Justice though, because there's, I, I just and Gert's onto him, and I, I want to see that blow up. I can't wait for Gert's that to the hero up. here, which yeah. is so cool because we never got to see that. She's the yeah. leader, and really in this in this regard, secret leader, but yeah. it's cool. <laughs> exactly. All right, uh, flash forward number six. I just got to see the end of this train wreck. Right. I have to. Yeah, I haven't liked an issue. Away. Yeah, I, I just have to see the end. I like the first issue. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's where it ended. This is yeah. he gets he's in control of the Mobius chair, right? And he yeah. gets his Dr. It's, Manhattan powers. Yeah, it's leading into that that free comic book day thing, right? So yeah. I, I get I want to see how what how they handle it and that might determine things going forward for, for me. In DC or with Flash or in general? With Flash. Well with Wally specifically. But yeah, maybe with, with DC, it depends. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, speaking of DC, Teen Titans, that is a book that we are enjoying, most of us. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So Good that's book, good man. It's there. I, I love the see what's going on yeah. next. Yeah. The 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 yeah. yeah at 6.30 six in the morning. Wow. Thank you. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for being that dedicated. Yeah. Also, I want to mention, like, thank you for all the new viewers on Comic Frontline. I think that's yeah. so, so cool. Yeah, thank you. Lot. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is amazing. We, we love this. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we really appreciate that. Thank That's you, awesome. guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, heading back to Michael with Red Sonia, Age of Chaos, number two. Yeah. So, in the last issue, it was um, like I, I remember reading this, like, I believe three weeks ago, and I said it was a little bit okay. So, I'm going to go into this and see what I think of it. And if I don't like what I see, I'm probably going to get rid of it. I don't know. Cause I, I think I said it was okay last issue. So I'll go in with a different set of mind and see what I think of it for this week. Okay. And uh, we'll head over to Mike because somebody just mentioned in the, in the chat, deceased unkillables. Number one. Yeah. Um, dude, I'm totally excited for this. I, I guess this the plot line here is now now that all the humans have abandoned Earth and went to this other Earth, the zombies or whatever the hell they are, 
are left on earth. So what happens to them? What happens, you know, with them, with each other and all this other kinds of crazy stuff. So I'm anxious to see, you know, like who is left? Like, do they talk to each other? Like if all the humans are gone, how do these characters, what do they interact with? So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun, I think. All right. And we talked about Gwen Stacy earlier. So ghost spider number seven comes out tomorrow and this, it's a new arc, right? It's the start of a new uh, arc. No. So oh. last issue is, a, is the fantastic four stuff. So it's Sue and, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm interested in that. I that, love that cliffhanger. So I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I was. I think I was reading a future solicitation or something. I got confused. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember us talking about how it was weird they were posing together on the beach and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It was very um, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got um, Red Mother number three coming out. I'm gonna uh, read one through three probably tomorrow. It, I think yeah, you'll you especially like it, Chris. Yeah, it's so good. So Freaking good! And I'm yeah, so excited. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it, and it's like you know that's not my type of genre, but I'm really enjoying this this series too. It's really good. So it's probably one of the best horror books I've read in a really long time. Um, yeah. It's just like the pacing's so good. It's thriller. Yeah. Yeah. Something that you are definitely reading, Chris. TMNT 103. E, continuing forward, new story arc. Splinter's gone. Somebody's watching the turtles. I think it's Shredder. I think Shredder is like going to be like their guardian because you mm. know he promised he was going to ch not change his ways, but he promised he was going to be a better. He was going to be better. Period. Yeah, I, and, I, know. yeah, I like the way that they've been separated just because you know dealing with this loss and everything. Oh my God, yes, my poor Mikey hasn't yeah. even walked. Yeah, I know. It's just they're handling each one of them so well and so differently. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, at the same time, I'm like, I want them to get back together. You know? Oh, they I, are. I think yeah, they're going to separate and then come back because you got rap in New York. Donnie wants to go back, leaves to go back to New York. Leo is lost. Mikey is just completely withdrawn. Yeah. So it's it's really good. Really powerful stuff going on there. I think Shredder is going to be the one that brings them back together or tries to kind of snap them out of it, which would be awesome. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, let's see. We got Valkyrie Jane Foster, number eight. I'm excited for her to go, uh, not up against, but team up with uh, Thor. Thor. That's yeah. going to be so cool. I love this book. This is just like, I think, not just one of Marvel's best books, but like one of the best superhero books on stands right now. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's been really good. Uh, let's see. We also got five years, number eight, Cat. Um, now that we know that it's only going to be, what, 10 issues? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm, so I don't know how to feel. Like, yeah. I don't feel like there's been really a story much, so no. I don't know. I we'll say. Yeah, I was shocked when we found that out. And it's like, okay, so we only have, like, three issues left now? And it's He's just... Like, what has happened? Nothing. Not much. Not much at all. I mean... Going to Russia? Right. I mean, she she almost gets killed, you know, thrown out of five-story building, but... She um, did it. <laughs> yeah, somehow. She uh okay moving on uh plunge number one is a new series from uh, i think it's image right mike no uh, this is, no, no it's dc this is oh the, it's dc oh it's this uh, joe, hill. joe hill yeah yeah. Joe hill. yeah and this one's actually written by joe hill and so how many uh, books is he rewriting now there's the dollhouse the uh, he's, he's, not he's not actually writing he's not actually writing dollhouse though he's not writing. oh it's just one of his books it's yeah, one of his uh, under his oh, band okay. i thought right. he was writing it i was under but, the impression he was writing it right but he's writing this one and this one is pretty cool as this is about a uh like a sunken ship and there's all kinds of shit living in it and they got to explore it and so yeah that's going to be kind of cool <laughs> just makes me think horror game for sure so i'm like yeah i'm in yeah so uh time of comics acts uh is anybody reading dr tomorrow the valiant book tomorrow it's a very superhero only one that would you be doing it if any would be michael or brent no, yeah i was i was thinking about trying it it just depends i've got so many books i gotta i gotta make I've got a lot i gotta see how many first. yeah so maybe it's a maybe <laughs> let's see um i think we only have a few left there's bang number one from dark horse which there's been a lot of buzz about this book it's, yeah yeah, so I, yeah, I'm, I don't I'm know curious. why, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not to, I don't, I just don't know where the buzz came from, but I'm, I'm yeah. hoping it's 
great book. Um, it looks like very James Bondy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to check it out. The art looked pretty cool too. So, mm -hmm. and I think is all we have left. Yeah, I think all we have left now is a uh, Wolverine issue number mm -hmm. one. So exciting time. times. This is going to be my third favorite X-Men book unless they screw it up and I hope they don't. He hasn't it. read it yet. Who knows? <laughs> we haven't had Wolverine. Oh, yeah, listen to me. We haven't had a Wolverine, the main Wolverine in a long time. It's been years. Hopefully in the years that it's been that we've had that little like cleansing away from the 300 different Wolverine titles, Marvel's ready to give us a good Wolverine Title well, again. I mean, if you guys like X Force, it's you know same writer. I'm yeah. worried. I, I love like X Force. But... What I'm saying that's the thing that gives me hope because I do like X Force. I exactly over the years, and I, I know there've been like some epic Wolverine runs and everything. I can never get into Wolverine solo book. The only Wolverine solo book I ever got into was Laura's. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried too, but hopefully it'll be good. They yeah, lost I've never Wolverine. loved the Wolverine book. Yeah, they lost yeah. when Wolverine became a school teacher. It's like, yeah, no, now you're just completely doing well, the opposite of who. See, Wolverine. that was probably one I enjoyed more than his too. solo yeah. series. Yeah, I always that the Wolverine, I love Wolverine uh, X Men yeah. Academy Wolverine one or whatever it was. Yeah. Wolverine, yeah. yeah, Wolverine, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. Um, yeah, I I enjoyed that one. I, I mean, I didn't love the art. I liked other Wolverine stories as well. Yeah, depending on what you're what you're looking for. Um, but we are at the end of the show, so we're actually going to pick out our winner for uh, the digital comics. So if you guys are still here, <laughs> we are going to pick out. I'm going to screen share myself so we can see. I've been writing everyone's names down. Random.org. Um, when we said we didn't have any sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i put everyone down this is everyone who's commented <coughs> we are gonna, i think whoever's gonna be number one on the list is gonna be the winner and radio matt gaming so we will uh hopefully message you on youtube somehow to give you the code I'll have to figure that one out. But I don't know. Is there inboxes anymore on YouTube? I don't know. No, I don't think so. No. There yeah. are. You'll have to find out an email but, address. Yeah, we'll we'll talk somehow, Radio Matt, and we'll we'll get you. And if we'll you can you maybe better. email the comic frontline. Yeah, if you can email comic frontline uh he's still in the at gmail .com, yeah. Oh wow, amazing. Thanks, God. I, yeah, actually you could like yeah, just email comic frontline at gmail.com and we'll give you the codes. Yeah, just send an email to uh, comic frontline gmail. We'll get you there. We will also add you. Donations. You'll win next time, Serenity. You never know. There'll be gmail. more. There'll be more uh, digital codes to giveth away. Okay. There we go. Yes, we'll definitely do this again at some point. We always celebrate something. Oh yes. Right. Well, that's, that's, that's that's said, before we end the show, a uh, question to go around to everybody. Does anyone have anything they'd like to talk about? Coming, up, coming out, I knew Michael did. Michael, go ahead. Yes. So on my uh, Deuterock 18 channel, I did have uh, two new videos that I uploaded this week of uh, Tetris 99, of the two events of CPU Battle and marathon so definitely if you want to go head over to dude rock 18 and go check that out and you know support and comments would be awesome. yes so uh go check it out and let's rock on together but you know what speaking of that don't forget if well, you're new to the channel i had something but go ahead shoot, nope <laughs> Go. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say um, it was a good segue. I'm sorry. I, I know. I'm sorry, and I didn't oh, mean to fine. cut you off and ruin it. No, no, uh, no. I just want to tell everybody that our Kickstarter ended last night, and we were successfully funded. Uh, hit our first stretch yeah. goal and all that stuff. So, first so one much. of 2020. More to come. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. Now go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. And with the success noted, let's talk about some successful stuff. If you're new to Comic Frontline, definitely click that sub button. If that was the worst transition. <laughs> <laughs> now there's no more. <laughs> Chris. 
Now look what you did. Subscribe if you're watching you... on Comic Frontline. Subscribe to Comic Frontline if you're watching on Comic Book Corner 2.0. Subscribe to both channels, Comic Book Corner 2.0 and Comic Frontline. Above Mike's head is notification bell. Click the notification bell after subscribing. So this way you're notified when we go live and when new videos are released. Underneath Michael, all of our social media at Comic Frontline. You can find us in all those awesome places right there. Sure. And then diagonal underneath cat is thumbs up. Give this video a thumbs up. Helps us out. Helps everybody out. And yes, everybody's pointing everywhere. So you know what? Good night, everybody. Happy six year anniversary to Comic Frontline. Many more years to come. Take care. And we'll see you all next week. Happy new comic book day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching, guys. Take Bye. care. Bye. Congratulations to the winner. <laughs>